Friday night, everybody, and welcome to beautiful Rosenberg, Texas, and welcome to the first Friday night of the Texas high school football playoffs. This is VibeFortBend.com, and we've got a great matchup for you. It's one of those uncharted waters kind of uh, matchup, as as you have Fulcher for its first year ever in Class 6A, 10-0 in, on the season, and they're taking on Katie Pito, uh, Pato, which is the, they were the second best playoff qualifier with an enrollment size to put them in class 6a division one but peto has some awesome talent you are never ever going to face a kd isd opponent in the first round of the playoffs that's not a quality opponent so this is going to be tough for the fulcher chargers and if they can get past this first round game then next week they would play against either houston lamar or cy fair but first things first you can't ever take anyone lightly especially when your first round opponent is a KDISD team. So I'm Roger Smith and Christina Weber joins me as the silent partner inside the mothership at Vipe World Headquarters. And we're gonna bring you the countdown to kickoff show featuring both head coaches, David Hicks of Peto and Nick Caduti of Fulcher. Our coverage is brought to you by Xfinity, First Hire in Automotive, Leonetti Graphics, League One Volleyball, also known as LOVB.com, where they will start their inaugural season in January, and the Houston team will be boast, uh, based right here in Fort Bend County and play its home matches at the Fort Bend Epicenter, and we're also brought to you in part by the Volleyball School, and speaking of volleyball, we're going to be keeping you up to date on what the Fulcher girls are doing in their Region 3 final championship match against Katie Cinco Ranch. They're over at the Merrill Center right now, and I got good news. They have won the first two sets. Oh, that is so awesome. I want those Fulcher girls to have smiles on their faces and come over to this stadium before the game is over, and hopefully we can get an in-game interview with them. So we're getting you ready for the football playoff game between Fulcher and Peto, and we'll keep you abreast on what is going on at the Merrill Center in the Volleyball Regional Championship. So if Fulcher wins tonight over Katie Cinco Ranch, they need to win two more matches, and they are state champions. But enough about that. We'll step aside and be back with Coach Coach David Hicks of the Peto Panthers on VibeFortBend.com. Ooh, we got a question. Brian W. asks, it's the holiday season, and I'm looking for deals. Is Xfinity having a Black Friday sale? Well, Brian, we got you covered. Get iPhone 16 Pro on us. Just ask us how. Plus, you can also get fast, reliable Xfinity Internet with a line of Xfinity Mobile Unlimited for a great low price. So don't wait. Bring home a new iPhone 16 Pro built for Apple intelligence. And connect to reliable 5G and Wi-Fi speeds up to a gig on Xfinity Mobile. That's a big deal. <laughs> More like a gig deal. Now through December 3rd, ask how to get the new iPhone 16 Pro on us with an unlimited plus line. Plus, get Xfinity gigabit internet with free Wi-Fi equipment for only $25 a month for 12 months with no annual contract when you add unlimited mobile. Go to Xfinity.com slash Black Friday sale to learn more. Restrictions apply. Taxes and fees extra. After promo, regular rates apply. Gig Wi-Fi requires Xfinity Gateway. Xfinity Mobile requires Xfinity Internet. Gig speeds available via hotspots to Xfinity Mobile customers only. Reduce speeds after use of monthly data included with your data option. Actual internet speeds and data thresholds may vary. Welcome to the Countdown to Kickoff show, the first Friday night of the postseason. It is Fulcher hosting the Peto Panthers, and it's time to visit with David Hicks, head coach of the Panthers. And... Coming out of Katie ISD, I know there is never a time when Katie's going to send a team to the 6A playoffs. It's not a quality team. Tell us why Fulcher should be concerned about playing you tonight. Uh, main thing is, is is just the team itself. You know, I think we're battle tested. You know, again, like you said, playing in Katie ISD, I think we we've we've seen these nights, we've seen playoff nights. I don't think you find a better district. You know, and um, I think you have a, a great group of kids. We're right now we're senior led. And uh, player led, and um, I think they're bought in. I think we're locked in, ready to go. All right. So um, I don't think this matters too much. We got a really good surface to play on. But has your team ever played a game here in Trailer Stadium? No, sir. No, sir. We never played Trailer Stadium, but we have played in spring, which is, you know, it's still the hour drive. You know, I don't think anything changes outside of what we do. So. Did you say it was an hour drive to get here? Or that's that means we need to work on our traffic. Yeah, 99 is pretty tough. 99 is pretty tough. You know, uh, right around right around that uh, Cinco Ranch area is pretty stuffed up now. Yeah, I've done that a few times. Okay, 
Uh, Coach Hicks, one other thing I wanted to ask you about. You know, Peyto, very early in its history as a school, got a state championship. And uh, how much does that mean now? It's It's been a few years, but uh, is it something that is sometimes in your players' minds? Do you have something that they see each day that kind of reminds them that the, stu- the team has won a championship? Yeah, it's definitely going to be a part of mine. I think it's still a part of a winning tradition that we just try to uphold, you know, we say it was a long time ago, but really, you know, these kids here, you know, a lot of them were, a lot of them were in our feeder pattern and in our eighth, some in ninth grade. So, you know, it wasn't too long ago for us. It's still short term, and you know, a lot of them have brothers, have siblings, you know, and uh, that were on that team. So, a lot of them they just want to, don't want to let anybody down, and they just play for the community and and just keep it, just keep that winning edge. Well, sometimes history repeats itself. But I know that you have no interest in history repeating itself. I look at Fulcher, a school that has a large enrollment, just like Peyto, has has a lot of athletic talent, and they're looking to gain that state championship. But, of course, you want it to be uh, not in 2024. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, that 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 is uh that's definitely the things that we want. That's definitely the plan to come out here and just execute, play, play hard, and just play our brand of football and bring just a championship mindset. Very nice. Thank you, Coach Hicks. Appreciate the visit. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. We'll be back and we'll talk with Nick Caduti, head coach of your Fulcher Chargers. VibeFortBend.com is your one and only broadcast home for Fort Bend County High School sports. Glad to have you with us. Also glad to have with me Christina Weber, the silent partner inside the mothership at Vibe World headquarters. And we're brought to you by Xfinity, First Tyron Automotive, Leonetti Graphics, and League One Volleyball, LOVB.com. We'll be right back with Coach Caduti as the Countdown to Kickoff show rolls on on VitefortBend.com. Be the first to know. Sign up for the first Tire and Automotive email updates and be the first to hear about exclusive promotions and special offers. Plus, get a $10 off coupon for your next service just for joining. First Tire and Automotive always treats you like family and puts you first. $15 off your next battery purchase and $75 off service, totaling $500 or more. Head to the website for even more specials and to set your appointment. FirstTireandAuto.com. First Tire and Automotive supporting school and youth sports programs for over 26 years. Get to one of First Tire and Automotive's four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. FirstTireandAuto.com Mark your calendars. Professional volleyball is coming to Houston in January 2025. Led by Houston's newest pro team, Love Houston Volleyball, get ready for nonstop action as some of the world's best players take the court. Featuring Olympic medalist Micah Hancock and Jordan Thompson, Love Houston is ready to compete for the season's first championship title. Get your tickets now for this historic first season. Visit LOVB.com today. Volleyball is the next major league. A game without a crowd is just a scrimmage. A performance without an audience is just a rehearsal. Without your presence, high school sports and the performing arts aren't possible. Ensure that these essential extracurricular activities continue to enrich the lives of students in Texas. Purchase a ticket to your local high school's game or performance. This message presented by the UIL and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. Welcome back to the Countdown to Kickoff show, the first Friday night of the playoff season, the postseason as the Fulcher Chargers are hosting Katie Pato. This is the new frontier, Class 6A playoffs, taking on Katie ISD teams. Coach Nick Caduti is with me. And describe the week of practice that you had, and did you do things basically the same as other weeks, or was it more intense? No, it's the same. Um, you know, you have you might actually shorten practice a little bit because of the time and where you're at, and the darkness. You know, the daylight savings time thing hits you, and so you know, for the most part, it's you know, do what we do, have have a good time doing it, uh, make these kids realize that Texas high school football is different, and. There's a different energy in the air. It's uh, it's exciting, and this is going to be an exciting football game. Every bit as different as when you switch from the NBA regular season to the playoffs. That's a totally different ball game. Now I'm going to talk about one silly thing. Uh, this is radio; people can't see it, but you have a mustache. It looks pretty good. I had one when I was in college. It looked terrible. I wish someone had told me to cut it off or held me down and cut it off. But uh, why this the mustache tonight? It's mustache season. That's playoff season. You know, it's uh. 
my daughter saw me. I shaved on uh, Thursday, and my daughter saw me, my youngest, and she goes, she started. She actually cried. Uh, she hated it. She's nine. And my oldest told me that uh, Mario and Luigi had a love child, and I was born. So, uh, but it's kind of a thing. We all do it. We for the first game, we all do mustaches. It started like four years ago, and it really stuck. It just stuck. And so it's it's cool. It's kind of something fun our coaches do, and we have a good time doing it. All right, so we know Peyto is good, even though they did lose their final regular season game against Jordan. What is it that they do best on offense, and, and what must you do to stop it? You know, offensively, I think they do a good job. The offensive line's really good, well coached. Running backs are special. Uh, they've got special talents. They've got special athletic ability. Um, defensively, their defensive line is bar none, some of the best I've seen in a while. Uh, they got a free safety committed to A&M who can play football. Um, they've got a couple uh, couple D linemen who are really impressive, number zero um, and number 98. Um, I also think number nine, uh, I think his name is Nick Elko. I think he's a player. So it's going to be fun. I mean, it's a good matchup up front, and I think that's where people are going to get the, the view tonight. You mentioned Elko, the very player I was looking for here on the roster. He's not related to the A&M head coach, but I understand Coach Mike Elko would probably want to adopt him and he's that good. I think he's freaking good. I don't know how many offers he's got, but there's something special about a kid that can line up, call the defense on the D-line, move people around, and still make plays. All right, and as for your team, everybody good to go? Injury situation and health, not going to keep anybody off the field, right? Everybody's healthy, ready to play some football. Let's get after it. It's playoff season. All right. I'd like to keep talking, but, you know, we got to get this thing kicked off. Coach Caduti, good luck tonight. Appreciate you. And uh, we know it's not going to be easy taking on these Peyto Panthers. A state champion one time when they were almost brand new sounds like a really good idea yeah. for another fairly new school that I know. Two of them, actually, Randall and Fulcher, both capable, I think. But it starts with the first step. Glad to have you with us, and I am also glad to be uh, – joined by Christina Weber. She is the silent partner inside the mothership at Vipe World Headquarters. And our broadcast tonight is brought to you, as always, by Xfinity, home of the 10G Next Generation Network, only from Xfinity. The future starts now by First Hiron Automotive, four great Fort Bend County locations, including one in Katy Cinco Ranch for all you Fulcher fans. We're brought to you by Leonetti Graphics, the official banner provider of VibeFortBend.com. And we're also brought to you by LOVB.com. That's Love Houston Professional Volleyball. It's the new major league, and they'll start up their new league with the Houston team performing their home matches in the Fort Bend epicenter. So it's right here in Fort Bend County. That's Love Houston. Can't wait for it to start in January. We'll be right back to kick it off. Peyto and Fulcher, 6A Division I playoffs. We are the volleyball school with three locations, Katy, the Woodlands, and our newest in Richmond on West Belfort. We have the best developmental volleyball program in Fort Bend. We have the high level training you need to get on the top club and school teams, and you'll have fun doing it. Our Richmond facility is at 18120 West Belfort. Visit the volleyballschool.com and come train with us. We appreciate the volleyball school throughout the volleyball season supporting us and helping us present Tuesday Night Volleyball every single week. And we've got some great news for you, but first I'm going to tell you something that is required by the UIL. Attention football fanatics. Don't miss out on the opportunity to be part of Texas football history where dreams are realized, legends are born, and where unforgettable moments unfold before your very eyes. Mark your calendars for the UIL State Football Championships December 18th through 21st at AT&T Stadium in Arlington where the best teams from 6-man to 6-A leave it all on the field in the hopes of being a champion. For the latest updates and ticket information, head over to UILTexas.org slash football. Again, that's UILTexas.org slash football. And speaking of UIL playoffs, there's something I need to tell you about. It's all good news. Okay, so thanks to Justin Crocker. He's the police officer at Fulcher High School. He's also escorted the girls, you know, in that police unit that goes out in front of the bus. He has escorted them to the Merrill Center tonight where they are playing their regional championship match against Katie Cinco Ranch. And Fulcher is up two sets to one. They won the first one, 25-21. Then they won 26-24. 
although I might have that out of order, you know, set one and set two, but they're up two sets to none, and they are leading 16 to 11 in the third, so they are threatening to sweep the Cinco Ranch team that, according to Texas Girls Coaches Association, which updates its rankings even during the playoffs, had Katie Cinco Ranch ranked number one in the state, not just Division One, not well, actually it is uh, Division One, but still they had Katie Cinco Ranch number one, but the Fulcher girls are nine points away from eliminating them, and I tell you that to tell you this: if the Fulcher girls go ahead and finish that match off and get the victory. First thing is that they're going to be playing Austin Westlake in the state semifinals. I'm thinking it would be Tuesday night. Don't know where it will be, but I'll tell you what, Coach Sidney Zimmerman is pretty good with the coin tosses and things like that. So I would hope that it would be at the Katie Merrill Center or something like that. If it's not, it might be in Aggie Land. Who knows? But I'll tell you what, FiveFortMen.com will be there to broadcast it for you. And I also hope that the girls can win that match and get over here and come to the stadium to cheer on the football team and that some of them will come up top to the concourse here at uh, Trailer Stadium and give us an in-game interview. All right, so as you probably could tell, the Fulcher team has come onto the field and Katie Pato is running out as well. They have a huge squad. They have, it seems like, about 50 guys who have duplicate numbers. Those are call-ups just to look intimidating. And they are a pretty impressive team. They've got the white uniforms with the Carolina blue numbers and stripes outlined in black. And they got the helmets, white helmets with the Peto logo on either side. Fulcher is all black. In fact, it is really hard to tell Randall apart from Fulcher. Black pants, black jerseys with silver numbers, and black helmets with the horse logo on either side. We'll step aside one more time and be back and kick it off. Peto against Fulcher on FightFortBend.com. Ooh, we got a question. Brian W. asks, it's the holiday season and I'm looking for deals. Is Xfinity having a Black Friday sale? Well, Brian, we got you covered. Get iPhone 16 Pro on us. Just ask us how. Plus, you can also get fast, reliable Xfinity Internet with a line of Xfinity Mobile Unlimited for a great low price. So don't wait. Bring home a new iPhone 16 Pro built for Apple intelligence. And connect to reliable 5G and Wi-Fi speeds up to a gig on Xfinity Mobile. That's a big deal. <laughs> More like a gig deal. Now through December 3rd, ask how to get the new iPhone 16 Pro on us with an unlimited plus line. Plus, get Xfinity gigabit internet with free Wi-Fi equipment for only $25 a month for 12 months with no annual contract when you add unlimited mobile. Go to Xfinity.com slash Black Friday sale to learn more. Restrictions apply. Taxes and fees extra. After promo, regular rates apply. Gig Wi-Fi requires Xfinity Gateway. Xfinity Mobile requires Xfinity Internet. Gig speeds available via hotspots to Xfinity Mobile customers only. Reduce speeds after use of monthly data included with your data option. Actual internet speeds and data thresholds may vary. Professional Volleyball is coming to Houston this January. Featuring Olympic medalists Micah Hancock and Jordan Thompson, Love Houston Volleyball is Houston's newest professional team. Get ready to watch some of the world's best volleyball players, from Olympic medalists to NCAA champions and international superstars, with the action kicking off on January 9th. Visit lovb.com for more information and tickets for Love Houston matches. Volleyball is the next major league. Be the first to know. Sign up for the first Tire and Automotive email updates and be the first to hear about exclusive promotions and special offers. Plus, get a $10 off coupon for your next service just for joining. First Tire and Automotive always treats you like family and puts you first. $15 off your next battery purchase and $75 off service, totaling $500 or more. Head to the website for even more specials and to set your appointment. FirstTireAndAuto.com. First Tire and Automotive supporting schools and youth sports programs for over 26 years. Get to one of First Tire and Automotive's four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. FirstTireandAuto.com. The fans are cheering here at Trailer Stadium, not just because we're about to play an important football game and the Fulcher Charger team needs our support. They were just told that the Fulcher girls have won their regional championship match against Cinco Ranch in a sweep. 
They made it 25 to 18 in the third set, and they are celebrating right now, and pretty soon, hopefully, they will be headed over to Trailer Stadium, and we'll get to see them. And I hope that they will come up and join us. All right. The captains for the Fulshire Chargers, I didn't get them all lined up, but it looks like Chance Bryant, outstanding offensive lineman. Sheldon Rice. Yeah, they're standing sideways now, so that's why I can't tell exactly. Bill Stevens is our referee, and here's what he says. All right, that's refreshing. A team wins the toss and says, we want the football. By the way, Jerome Drain, one of the captains. As I said, Sheldon Rice, Patrick Broadway, and Chance Bryant. Okay, we are ready to go. Katie Pato will kick it off from the east end of the stadium. And they'll have a pretty good wind at their back, so that's a good choice for the first quarter. We are ready to rock from Trailer Stadium, and you couldn't ask for better football weather. What you could ask is for some folks who came a little underdressed, you know, they're just wearing a t-shirt and shorts. At the end of the evening, they may not be very comfortable. It's 65 right now, that's not cold, but the temperature is gonna drop and the wind might continue. All right, so deep to receive for Fulcher is Zane Smith and also Fred Hicks. And also going back deep, Mike Brown, he is the freshman sensation. And you know freshman sensation Mike Brown and also Fred Hicks, both freshmen back there. They are the deepest one standing between the five and the 10 yard line. Pretty decent crowd from Peyto. Not a hard trip to make, it just takes a long time when you use the Grand Parkway. Omar Yagi gonna kick off for the Katy Peto Panthers and here we go. A lot of the Fulcher fans on their feet. The kick is in the air. And it comes down to number 19, Fred Hicks. Up the left hash marks, gets out to the 30, beats a man, 40, 45, 50, near sideline. And finally wrestled out just beyond the Peto 40. Welcome to the club, Fred Hicks. Ethan Zimmerman saved a touchdown. Hicks found a, a little sliver of daylight and he headed for the sideline and there was just great blocking for him throughout that kickoff return and they mark him at the 38 first down and 10 for the Chargers. Ryland Forks is the quarterback. And he's in a pistol formation with Patrick Broadway behind him and Zane Smith to his right. Fake handoff, drop back, Forks throws, and the pass is incomplete off the hands of Braden Kennedy, who was a little bit open near the 18-yard line. Breaking it up there was Jaden Spellman of Peto, second and 10. All right. Little trickeration, a little unusual something going on because Ryland Forks has stepped off the field and it looks like Zane Smith is gonna go under center. And we'll have Broadway behind him. Mike Brown and Braden Kennedy off to the right side of the formation and on the left side, it's an H-back, Creighton Dickey. And now they move the tight end over to the right side. That is Trey Jametta. Smith takes the handoff and he just keeps it himself around the right side. Pushing away tacklers, gets to the 35, keeps fighting, gets to the 33. That's a pickup of five, and it'll be third down and five to go. I'm looking at Ryland Forks, and he is staying on the sideline. Right next to the offensive coordinator, David Meggett. Fulcher moving from right to left here in the first quarter. They gave Zane Smith four yards on that previous play, so it's third and six. They run that same formation with Zane taking the snap. Same play over the right side, fighting for the first down. He's got it inside the 30 to the 27-yard line, and that'll move the sticks. It's a first down. Think of First Tyrant Automotive for all your car care needs. Check them out at firsttyrantauto.com. 
and they brought back the horsey sound effect. I love that. All right, four receivers. Quads to the near side. Broadway, Brown, Jametta, and Kennedy. Still Zane Smith under center with Creighton Dickey behind him. Peto jumps, and Smith's going to throw it. Lofts one toward the sideline, and it's picked off by Peto, but I think is going to get bailed out because Peto jumped across. They'll be guilty of offsides. I think this is the biggest Fulcher crowd that I have seen here at Trailer Stadium. Lots of excitement about the playoffs. They've been in Class 6A for 11 weeks. By the way, that is Carmelo Brooks. And he is one heck of a football player, but fortunately for Fulcher, his miscue helps the Chargers out. So a five-yard penalty moves the ball to the 21. First down and five to go, and still Zane Smith under center. Four receivers on the left side, and Zane runs it to the left. He's got a lot of room. He's pushing people down, and he gets to the six. It'll be first and goal for the Chargers. Yet another first down. Think of First Tyrant Automotive for all your car care needs. Check them out, firsttyrantauto.com. They have a location in Katy Cinco Ranch, and I would appreciate it. If you need something done for your car to keep it running at its very best, new tires, whatever, just tell them you listen to VibeFortBend.com. We appreciate their support. First and goal from the six, Zane Smith running left into the end zone. Touchdown, Chargers. It took them less than two minutes. 10.02 to go in the first quarter, and they're on top by a score of six to nothing. By the way, if you happen to be headed from the Merrill Center over here to Trailer Stadium. Uh, first of all, uh, drive carefully. And second, don't be so giddy that you lose control of the car because the girls just uh, made their way into the final four of state volleyball. And it's a two-point conversion try. Zane Smith keeps pushing over the left side. Looked like they were going to bottle him up, but he kept going, stayed on his feet into the end zone. And that... That two-point conversion makes it eight to nothing. So anyway, uh, by the way, if any of those girls are driving themselves, please be careful. These are the times to remember because they will not last forever. But I certainly hope they can come to the stadium. They've already announced that they beat Katie Cinco Ranch tonight in a sweep. The crowd loved it. They roared their approval, and I can't wait to see them all come in together. All right, we'll be back after this break, and... Fulcher will kick it off. They lead 8 to nothing. Be the first to know. Sign up for the first Tire and Automotive email updates and be the first to hear about exclusive promotions and special offers. Plus, get a $10 off coupon for your next service just for joining. First Tire and Automotive always treats you like family and puts you first. $15 off your next battery purchase and $75 off service, totaling $500 or more. Head to the website for even more specials and to set your appointment. FirstTireandAuto.com. First Tire and Automotive supporting school and youth sports programs for over 26 years. Get to one of First Tire and Automotive's four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. FirstTireandAuto.com. You never know what Fulcher's going to do on a kickoff. Peyton Tucker kicks it deep. And it's going to bounce into the end zone on one hop, and it'll be a touchback. Time to get down to the end zone. We'll come to the 25-yard line. It will be Panthers first. So we'll see what these Fulcher Chargers have cooked up on defense against the Katie Pato Panthers. Now, Fulcher went undefeated, and Pato had a really strong season, but they did lose their final game. In fact, their final two games, they lost to the Katie Tigers in the ninth game, and that's no shame in that. Seems like everybody loses to the Katie Tigers. But then after that, they lost to Jordan. And they got beat pretty bad last week. I don't know if that was a hangover from the Katy Tigers game or what, but we'll see how they perform on offense. Okay, here we go. Jackson Farrar, their quarterback, hands it off straight up the middle, and it's going to be a gain of about three over the right side. First carry was 
Curtis Zeno. He's a sophomore and a good looking running back. Make it a two yard gain, second down and eight. Three receivers near side of the formation. Farrar in the spread, now they move everybody over to the left on second and eight. Farrar fakes the handoff, rolls left, wants to pass, the left-hander throws near the sideline and he's got his man for a first down at the 36. That is DeQuaylen Lott. He's a senior receiver that moves the sticks. It's a first tire, the first down. Think of First Tyrant Automotive for all your car care needs. Check them out at firsttyrantauto.com. Ferrar hands it off straight ahead, and that's going to be a big gain for Peto. Inside, pulls your territory and down to the 44. Joshua Scott. Is that who that was? Nope, they handed it to Curtis Zeno again. Fulcher lining up with a four-man defensive front, three with their hands on the ground. Farrar fumbles, the ball is loose, bug on the rug, and Fulcher has it. It's a scoop, they're running it down. It is Caleb Augustus inside the 35, 20, and dragged down inside the 15-yard line. Big play by the Fulcher defense, an unforced error by Peto. Tyler Washington wrestled Caleb Augustus down and got him out of bounds. But instant red zone offense for the Fulcher Chargers. When Fulcher started the game, Ryland Forks was at quarterback. And after that first play, they moved him out of there. And they've been running plays where Zane Smith takes the snap. And they've been running a bludgeoning running game. They did have Zane Smith throw a pass. It was intercepted, but... Fortunately for Fulcher, it was wiped out by uh, an offside penalty. Zane Smith runs right, burrows forward, gets across the 10, and they mark him right there at the 10. Pickup of five, second down and five. Fulcher already up eight to nothing. And Zane Smith, whose mom says he hasn't had his hair cut since the second grade, has... Big blonde locks. I don't know if locks is the right word. It's very straight. It covers up his entire jersey number on the back. He runs left. Very simple play. Very powerful. His teammates pushing him. The pile moves inside the five and all the way down to the one. Oh, my goodness. It looked like it was going to stop at the five. There's a lot of bumping and grinding going on. But it is first and goal for the full shirt Chargers, already leading eight to nothing, and now they go with that quad formation. Four receivers on the near side, Brown, Broadway, Kennedy, and Jametta. Creighton Dickey lined up right behind Zane Smith. He's probably wondering, will I ever get the football? Zane Smith running straight over the right side. He dives. Is he in? Yes! Touchdown, Chargers! All right, it's time for another two-point play, I guess, and they bring in Demarius Fro. You know, Demarius Fro is, he's kind of the second fiddle running back, but the thing is, if he was on another team, he would be the top guy. Patrick Broadway, however, is kind of the, I guess, the headliner running back. So now we're going to go out of the shotgun formation, but it's still, well, it's Creighton Dickey who takes the snap. He runs right. He's into the end zone. No, did he, was he stopped short? He was stopped short. It looked like he was right there. So that two-point play fails, but Fulcher leads 14 to nothing. 7.40 to go. We'll be back on VibeFortBend.com, 7.40 to go in the first quarter. We're your broadcast home for Fort Bend County High School Sports. Ooh, we got a question. Brian W. asks, it's the holiday season and I'm looking for deals. Is Xfinity having a Black Friday sale? Well, Brian, we got you covered. Get iPhone 16 Pro on us. Just ask us how. Plus, you can also get fast, reliable Xfinity Internet with a line of Xfinity Mobile Unlimited for a great low price. So don't wait. Bring home a new iPhone 16 Pro built for Apple intelligence. And connect to reliable 5G and Wi-Fi speeds up to a gig on Xfinity Mobile. 
That's a big deal. <laughs> More like a gig deal. Now through December 3rd, ask how to get the new iPhone 16 Pro on us with an unlimited plus line. Plus, get Xfinity gigabit internet with free Wi-Fi equipment for only $25 a month for 12 months with no annual contract when you add unlimited mobile. Go to Xfinity.com slash Black Friday sale to learn more. Restrictions apply. Taxes and fees extra. After promo, regular rates apply. Gig Wi-Fi requires Xfinity Gateway. Xfinity Mobile requires Xfinity Internet. Gig speeds available via hotspots to Xfinity Mobile customers only. Reduce speeds after use of monthly data included with your data option. Actual internet speeds and data thresholds may vary. All right. Uh, that commercial didn't end before the kickoff, but I can tell you what happened. You know, Peyton Tucker ran at the football, and he ended up kicking it, but you never know who's going to kick the football for uh, Fulcher. But he kicked it down around the 25-yard line, and it bounced once, and a Peyto player just decided to fall on it because the kick coverage was coming at him, you know, like a tsunami. So 7.40 to go in this first quarter, and Fulcher is up 14 to nothing. And Peyto had started to move the football before they turned it over. And now we got a flag, maybe some kind of substitution infraction, I'm thinking, on Peyto. Bill Stevens, the referee, will tell us. But it was Caleb Augustus who kind of, he didn't quite grab the ball clean in the air. I don't know if you were able to hear that, but I was right. Substitution infraction. Thank you, Bill Stevens, our referee. So Augustus didn't catch it clean in the air. It kind of dropped at his feet, but bounced right up about knee high. He grabbed it and set sail and got inside the 20. And then they scored a few plays later. First down and 15. Umbrella motion from Katie Pato, and they run up the middle. Look out. There's going to be a big run. In fact, it may be a touchdown, breaking it all the way down the middle and heading in for a touchdown. It's an 84-yard run. Jackson Farrar. Well, Bullshire's defense better not let their guard down. That was straight up the middle. A hole opened up and it didn't take long at all. The kick is up and good. Correction, the kick was no good, pushing it off to the right. Omar Yagi missing the extra point. So it's 14 to six, Fulcher, 7.26 to go in the first quarter. Lots of action already on BikeFortBand.com. Be the first to know. Sign up for the first Tire and Automotive email updates and be the first to hear about exclusive promotions and special offers. Plus, get a $10 off coupon for your next service just for joining. First Tire and Automotive always treats you like family and puts you first. $15 off your next battery purchase and $75 off service, totaling $500 or more. Head to the website for even more specials and to set your appointment. FirstTireAndAuto.com First Tire and Automotive supporting school and youth sports programs for over 26 years. Get to one of First Tire and Automotive's four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. FirstTireandAuto.com Well, assistant head coach and defensive coordinator Jared Sloan's going to be talking to the defense. Meanwhile, Yagi gets the kick into the air. It's rather short, and Zane Smith takes it at the 27th straight up the right. Hash marks. Goes through a lot of traffic and gets across the 40 to the 42. By the way, I always look around at the sidelines for TV news photographers, and I see a guy in a blue jacket. I'm not really sure which which station he's with. That might even be Randy McElvoy of KPRC. I'm not sure. We have a penalty. Evidently, it'll be against Peto. Formation on the kicking team number two. 
He got back behind the 35-yard line after the ready for play was there. Five-yard penalty from the end of the kick. First down. Focus. All right, that is Corday Christ. You don't often hear of an illegal formation on a kickoff. But now Fulcher has better field position. They have it at the 48-yard line. Their own 48-yard line right in the middle of the field, and Ryland Forks is back under center as quarterback. The sophomore who has started every game this year and played every meaningful snap, and he's got three running backs behind him. Now he splits those backs, and it's basically an empty backfield. Fork sends Mike Brown in motion, gives it to him on the jet sweep, runs for the edge on the right side, and he gets a couple of yards, but that's it. But because of the penalty, it was only first and five. And so he picks up two, and it's now going to be second and three. He got it to the 50-yard line as they gave him forward progress. But you see the, the great ability of the Peyto defense to string it out when a team runs the football wide. Bro, Broadway, and Smith in the backfield lining up behind Forks. And they line up very close behind him. It's not like they really get a lot of momentum. It's just hit him quick with the power. And running to the left. It is Patrick Broadway. Gang tackle inside the 40. They push him back once he gets to the 38. But that'll be a first down for these Fulcher Chargers whose offense is really in high gear. Dejan Petaway on the tackle. And we are not even halfway through the first quarter. We've got 6.20 to go and the clock ticking down. Fulcher's offensive line, very impressive, including Righteous Spencer, the sophomore center. Actually, he's the left guard. Sorry about that. 38-yard line, first and 10 for the Chargers. Forks running it to the right. And he is upended after he picks up about three. Somebody really submarined him and, and hit him hard, and that was Jaden Spellman. And he gets big congratulations from Dejan Petaway. 14-6, Fulcher on top. We're in the first quarter. It was 14 to nothing before Peto got an 86-yard run from Farrar. Second down and seven after the Forks carry. Wipes his hands off on the towel. Turns around, hands it off to Broadway, running left. And he gets a couple of yards. That's it. Very, very happy with himself is Corday Christ. He kind of grabbed the legs of Patrick Broadway and limited him to the gain of two. It is third and five coming up. And increasingly, week by week, Fulcher has asked Ryland Forks to throw the football. But in this situation, it's going to be that snap to either Dickey or Smith. They snap it to Dickey. He runs right. He makes a cut. He fights toward the 30. He's pushed back at the 31. And it's going to be a fourth down situation. Fourth down and three coming up. And the Peyto fans are going crazy like it's a turnover or something. But you know what? Okay. The down box guy was was making a he was setting the the line of scrimmage like it was a four yard loss but it wasn't it's now fourth down and three and i admire the peto fans man they're making a lot of noise over there and against dickey and smith both with their hands out possibly getting the snap but they look over to the sideline 10 seconds on the play clock now they're ready to roll on fourth and three, I don't think I've ever heard more noise at one time in Trailer Stadium. There goes Dickey, fighting for the first down. It's close. It's very close. He's right at the line to gain. Peto is saying they stopped him, and the Chargers are staying, keeping the offense on the field. It may require a measurement. I think we're going to get a measurement. You don't see one that often these days. By the way, last night's broadcast was a 63-7 win 
for the Randall Lions over Belton. It was a mismatch. Belton came in with a record of 2-8 and eight overall. This is going to be really close. Really, really close. Fulcher advanced the ball near the 28-yard line. And they're going to stretch out the chains. And Peto has held. They get the football down 14-6. And their defense is fired up. So Creighton Dickey ran to the right, and he pushed, and he came up less than a foot short. And Fulcher's defense needs to be ready this time. They gave up the 86-yard touchdown. First and 10 for Peto from their own 28. Farrar in the offset eye. Pistol formation, kind of a hybrid pistol formation. Takes the snap. Hands it off straight ahead. Good yardage for Peto. Terrence Johnson. The running back picked up seven. It's second down and three. Terrence Johnson carrying again. He's in the open. He's got a first down. Gets over the 40 to the 42. That's a first down. It'll move the sticks. Think of First Tire and Automotive for all your car care needs. Check them out at firsttireandauto.com. Well, it looks like Peto's offensive line is just as tough to deal with as Fulcher's offensive line is. Farrar hands it off. There goes Terrence Johnson again. Short gain up the middle. Three-yard pickup. Logan Hudson getting part of the tackle. Second down for the Panthers. Two-yard gain. I think I said it was three. Just two. Second down and eight. Umbrella motion, and it's a jet sweep coming to the near side. Fulcher strings it out well. It's only going to be about a two-yard pickup. Cameron Green carrying and Caleb Augustus getting most of the tackle and I see Chance Bryant who plays on the offensive line but sometimes plays defense as well for Fulcher also on that tackle and now it's going to be third down and seven only one yard gained on that previous play three receivers on the left side of the formation on third and seven the ball on the near hash empty backfield for Jackson Farrar Sends a man in motion from the far side, and he stops. And now a run up the middle. My before, and he's crushed. Sheldon Rice locked him up for a loss of two. And it'll be time for Peto to punt. We're under two minutes to go in the first. And Fulcher's defense really improving their performance on that possession. So in these punt situation, Omar Yagi, who does the place kicking, also does the punting. Looks like it's Braden Kennedy ready to receive, uh, maybe it's Mike Brown back to receive this punt. And it's a wobbler, and Brown has it, drops it, and it's loose, look out! Peto says they have the football. If they do, they're in the red zone. It is Peto football. Mike Brown running to his left, and there was a wind behind the punter, and he dropped it, and right after it went off his hands, someone came along who was rushing the punt, knocked him out of the way, and Peto recovered at the 18. So you got to be ready for those crises and those momentum swings in a playoff game, and we'll see how Fulcher's defense rises up. They had given up the one first down and then three more downs later. It was time for Peto to punt. But now the Chargers really need to keep Peto out of the end zone. 
Curtis Zeno comes in as the running back to the left side of Farrar. Now it looks like they're going to snap it directly to him. And they hand it to Farrar. He's going to throw back to the near side. Ball in the air. And it is incomplete. It was a throwback to Curtis Zeno. And he really wasn't open. But I'll tell you what. The DB who was covering him really didn't know where the football was. That was Rafe Taruta. So he kind of put his hands up and was able, I think, to deflect it away. It'll be second down and 10 from the 18. So sometimes I notice they snap it to Zeno and then hand it to Farrar. That's what happened on the touchdown run. The left-hander Farrar throws it out into the left flat. Uh, receiver breaks a tackle, fights inside the 10. I think it's a first down at the eight yard line for Peto. DeQuaylen Lott made that catch and they mark him one yard shy, in fact, less than one yard shy of the first down. The clock stops temporarily with 48 seconds to go. I'm not sure why it stopped. He did not go out of bounds. The clock is frozen at 48. And it's, oh, okay. Offsides penalty against Fulcher declined. It is now third and one from the nine yard line. And Peto has shown some creativity in its play calling. You don't necessarily know that they're gonna run between the tackles on a play like third and one. Now they move everybody from the right side of the formation over to the left. Farrar in the pistol. Takes the snap and hands it off. And there is Zeno. He's thrown down. I don't think he made it. Logan Hudson with a beautiful solo tackle. Just wrapped his arms around his waist and threw him down like a wet rag. And it's no gain. We got fourth and one coming up. And the clock is down to 15 seconds left in the first quarter. I think maybe... Peto will just let it run out. Then again, they might run a play. Clock is it. Seven seconds. They're just now getting their hands on the ground. Bullshit fans rattling the aluminum bleachers. They run it up the middle. A fight for the first down. He may have it. Curtis Zeno diving over the pile. I think he's got it, and it'll be first and goal. At about the seven, but there is a flag on the play. Bill Stevens, our referee. He's ready. Well, Asher Jacob was called for being offsides and he might not have been the only one in their zeal to stop the fourth and one play. Fulcher allows that penalty to get the ball to the five-yard line. It'll be first and goal when we come back with the start of the second quarter. This is VikeFortBend.com. Mark your calendars. Professional volleyball is coming to Houston in January 2025. Led by Houston's newest pro team, Love Houston Volleyball. Get ready for nonstop action as some of the world's best players take the court. Featuring Olympic medalists Micah Hancock and Jordan Thompson, Love Houston is ready to compete for the season's first championship title. Get your tickets now for this historic first season. Visit LOVB.com today. Volleyball is the next major league. Those coming out of the textbook, one very important lesson. All right, we can tell you that when the Fulcher girls play Austin Westlake, in the state semifinals next week, VikeFortBend.com will be there. I don't even know when they're playing or where they're playing. I just know I'm going to be there to broadcast it for you. All right, so Peto trailing 14-6 to but threatening to score. They have the football just inside the full sure five as we start the second quarter. And coming up at halftime, we have Daniel Gotera, formerly of KHOU Channel 11. And now he is with the Harris County Houston Sports Authority, a very important organization if you love the vast array of sports entertainment choices in Greater Houston. Farrar under center, turns around, hands it off, and there goes Zeno, hit near the line of scrimmage, but he does get a couple of yards. Coming in hard off the edge. 
It was Evan Ferns. One yard pickup, second and goal at the three. Second down and three. These are two very hard hitting teams. Peto looking for the tying touchdown, possibly. Farrar hands it off. And there goes Johnson. He gets down to the one yard line. Terrence Johnson hit the tackler really hard, and that tackler was David Obenor. Third down and goal at the one. Farrar again under center. Johnson in an I formation, and they hand it off, and into the end zone, touchdown, Peto. They handed it off to the fullback. The big man, Kylan White. And he takes it in. And it's 14 to 12, and will Peto go for two right here? It looks like they will. Well, not necessarily. They're running that swing and gate thing. They have four guys over here on the near side, four on the far side. Will they snap it? Yes, they do. And into the end zone, the two-pointer is good. Easy conversion for Cameron Green. Fulcher really wasn't ready for what Peto ran there. It was a funky formation for sure. All right, we're tied at 14, 10.57 to go before the half on BikeFortBend.com. Ooh, we got a question. Brian W. asks, it's the holiday season and I'm looking for deals. Is Xfinity having a Black Friday sale? Well, Brian, we got you covered. Get iPhone 16 Pro on us. Just ask us how. Plus, you can also get fast, reliable Xfinity Internet with a line of Xfinity Mobile Unlimited for a great low price. So don't wait. Bring home a new iPhone 16 Pro built for Apple intelligence. And connect to reliable 5G and Wi-Fi speeds up to a gig on Xfinity Mobile. That's a big deal. <laughs> More like a gig deal. Now through December 3rd, ask how to get the new iPhone 16 Pro on us with an unlimited plus line. Plus, get Xfinity gigabit internet with free Wi-Fi equipment for only $25 a month for 12 months with no annual contract when you add unlimited mobile. Go to Xfinity.com slash Black Friday sale to learn more. Restrictions apply. Taxes and fees extra. After promo, regular rates apply. Gig Wi-Fi requires Xfinity Gateway. Xfinity Mobile requires Xfinity Internet. Gig speeds available via hotspots to Xfinity Mobile customers only. Reduce speeds after use of monthly data included with your data option. Actual internet speeds and data thresholds may vary. All right, Peto, after tying this game up at 14, ready to kick off. Omar Yagi tees it up right in the middle of the field. Short run up to the ball, and he kicks it. And it is Mike Brown from the 20 yard line, cuts toward the middle, gets to the 30, jumps over the 30 to the 31, and that's where Fulcher will start a new possession. And correction, it wasn't Mike Brown, instead it was Fred Hicks, a freshman just like Mike Brown. So it looks like maybe Fulcher will run a little bit more of a conventional formation now. They have Patrick Broadway lined up behind quarterback Rylan Forks and no fullback in front of him, but Zane Smith is set up as an H-back. First he was on the left, now he's on the right, and now they move to kind of a T formation. Forks sends a man in motion, that is Kennedy. Give to Broadway, running hard over the right side. Gets to about the 35, pick up a four. Kind of reaching down to upend him on that tackle was Brandon Brown. Forks moving players around. Trey Jumetta moves to the right side of the formation. He's a tight end. On second and six. Forks hands it off, and there goes Broadway, breaking into the daylight. Gets across the 45 to the 46, and that's a first down. Vamar Johnson wrestled him down, knocked his balance, knocked off, knocked him off his balance, but it's a first down at the 47, and now we have the whistles, and I'm not sure what's going on here. Okay, timeout taken by Peto. We'll take it with him on ViveFortBend.com. After this, from the UIL, we shall return. 
A game without a crowd is just a scrimmage. A performance without an audience is just a rehearsal. Without your presence, high school sports and the performing arts aren't possible. Ensure that these essential extracurricular activities continue to enrich the lives of students in Texas. Purchase a ticket to your local high school's game or performance. This message presented by the UIL and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. Both teams still in huddles near their bench. All right, now Fulcher has come back out to line up over the football on first and 10 from their own 47. After that Peyto timeout, it is 10.02 to go in the first half, and it's 14 all. Broadway and Smith in the backfield behind Ryland Forks. And his handoff to Broadway, and he's hitting the backfield. That's a loss of two. He was absolutely engulfed by Kylan White. It'll be second down and 12. In fact, second down and 13. And if you were looking at the old highlight film, the classic from Super Bowl IV between the Chiefs and the Vikings, if Hank Stram was the head coach of the Chargers instead of uh, Nick Caduti, he'd say, there was too much leakage on that play. Second down and 13. And I wonder if soon we'll see Ryland Forks in his first must-pass situation. Now they're in a pistol formation with Broadway behind him. Fake to Broadway, rolling to the left, and Forks throws far sideline. It is caught! It is Kennedy! He's going to go! Touchdown, Chargers! Forks threading the needle between two defenders. And he fired it to Braden Kennedy along the far sideline. He emerged from the scrum, and there was nowhere that no one there to stop him. And it's a touchdown from 56 yards away. And the Chargers will go for two. They got that quad receiver set over to the left. Creighton Dickey behind Zane Smith, who's under center. Smith runs to the right. He goes for the goal line. He's in. That's the two-pointer. And Fulcher regains the lead 22 to 14. We'll be back on BikeFortBend.com, your one and only broadcast home for Fulcher Sports. Ooh, we got a question. Brian W. asks, it's the holiday season and I'm looking for deals. Is Xfinity having a Black Friday sale? Well, Brian, we got you covered. Get iPhone 16 Pro on us. Just ask us how. Plus, you can also get fast, reliable Xfinity Internet with a line of Xfinity Mobile Unlimited for a great low price. So don't wait. Bring home a new iPhone 16 Pro built for Apple intelligence. And connect to reliable 5G and Wi-Fi speeds up to a gig on Xfinity Mobile. That's a big deal. More like a gig deal. Now through December 3rd, ask how to get the new iPhone 16 Pro on us with an unlimited plus line. Plus, get Xfinity gigabit internet with free Wi-Fi equipment for only $25 a month for 12 months with no annual contract when you add unlimited mobile. Go to Xfinity.com slash Black Friday sale to learn more. Restrictions apply. Taxes and fees extra. After promo, regular rates apply. Gig Wi-Fi requires Xfinity Gateway. Xfinity Mobile requires Xfinity Internet. Gig speeds available via hotspots to Xfinity Mobile customers only. Reduce speeds after use of monthly data included with your data option. Actual internet speeds and data thresholds may vary. Okay, now the kickoff. It's an onside kick. And it's been touched. And it is. It's a fight for the football. I don't see who got it. The officials will have to peel bodies off. Fulcher players are cheering, and it is Fulcher football on the onside kick. They get it back with 9.03 to go in the half after just scoring a touchdown. Now the ball had not gone 10, year, 10 yards, but one of the Peyto players touched it, and you know, once that happens, then the ball is fair game if it is loose, and one of the Peyto players is down as he made his way back across the field. You do, do have a lot of hard hits and unexpected ones that can't really brace for on an onside kick. 
Okay, so it will be Fulcher football at their own 45, but I want to say something about the pass that Ryland Forks threw on that 56-yard touchdown to Braden Kennedy. The ball was on the near hash mark, and Ryland Forks didn't really roll out to the left, so he basically was setting up to pass exactly behind where the football had been. So he's basically standing on or very close to the near hash marks, and he fired it about 15 yards down the field, outside the numbers on the other side. So that is a deep out, and he whistled it in there, and there were a couple of Peyto players there both thinking, hey, I can intercept this. But he put so much zip on it that it got between the defenders, and Braden Kennedy caught it, and he broke away, and he scored the touchdown that made it 22-14 to after the two-point conversion. All right, I haven't been able to identify that Peyto player. He had started to run back over to his team's bench area and then he kind of bent over at the waist and went down to his knees and now he's lying on the ground and the training staff is trying to help him out it looks like they've gotten him to his feet nice hand from the full shirt crowd and I can't see the number because uh, coaches are assisting him and they kind of have their arms around him so you can't really see which number it is Okay, so the PA guy, whom I really trust and appreciate, by the way, Tyler Washington uh, is the guy that uh, the PA man has identified. All right, so Fulcher football. Forks back under center. And it looks like referee Bill Stevens is telling him to pull his football pants down over his knees, but... I don't know anybody who doesn't play with their knees uh, unexposed in today's game. Everybody's wearing shorts. No knee pads anymore that I can see. All right. First down and 10 from the 45. Pistol formation. Forks handed off. There goes Broadway over the right side. Stiff arms a man. Gets inside Peyto territory and wrestled out at the 40. 15-yard pickup from Patrick Broadway. I really like the way they say first down here at Trailer Stadium. You know, like it's a normal conversation. It doesn't make your ears bleed. All right, Demarius Fro is lined up as the running back. The play clock now down to 10, and Fulcher just now getting set. Forks calling out signals. He's ready to receive the snap. Three on the play clock, takes it, hands it off to Fro. Bounces off the right side, and that would have been a big gain, but he was tripped up. Nice play there by Jaden Spellman. And it's just going to be a four-yard pickup, but I think Fro, if Spellman had not kind of grabbed him by the instep and tripped him up, I think he would have been jaunting down the near sideline. Pistol formation again. Ryland Forks with Fro behind him. Ball at the 35-yard line. Second down and six. Here goes Fro following his blockers. Only gets one yard. In getting through the convoy and making the tackle there for Peto. I'm going to get the, a visual on the number. Samuel Wright. And Mr. Wright was Mr. Wrong for Fulcher there, but it was a two-yard gain. So it's third down and four. Creighton Dickey comes in as one of the running backs. In fact, it is Zane Smith and Creighton Dickey in tandem. Throw is out there, and so too is Broadway. Zane Smith running right. He's tripped up, and he's not going to get the first down. It'll be a fourth down situation as knifing into the backfield was Corday Christ, and he tripped up Zane. So it's going to be third and a long two for the Chargers, and they're going to leave the offense on the field. They're kind of in no man's land at the 32. There's no sense trying a field goal from there, and there's no sense punting from there, so they'll just go for it. 
Peto with a very quick defensive front. They can sometimes get through those gaps. Fulcher players pointing at everybody to get their offensive assignments, and there goes Smith, and he's got the first down. Slanting over the left side, and there wasn't a lot of room, but there was enough, and that moves the sticks. It's a first down, think of First Tyrant Automotive for all your car care needs. Check them out at firsttyrantauto.com. New line of scrimmage is the 29 and a fresh set of downs for the Fulcher Chargers who are, who are doing something that is, you know, tends to uh, take its toll on the defense when they have to go out there for a lot of snaps. So they got the onside kick following a touchdown drive. Zane Smith under center. Forks is off the field. Smith running over the right side and gets a yard, maybe two. And coming around from the backside, running him down was Kylan White. So it's just a pickup of, well, he, he, got, he got about three there. Second down and seven. Now Smith is under center. Dickey is right behind him. Fro and Broadway move to the right behind the guard and the tackle. Heavy to the right, and there goes Zane. Breaks into the open. 15, 10, 5, touchdown! Zane Smith scores from 26 yards out. And now it's a two-touchdown lead again for Fulcher. By the way, I was just thinking, I mean, I guess I could have asked uh, Sidney Zimmerman, head coach of the Fulcher volleyball team, you know, you're taking the bus over to the Merrill Center. Will they just get on the bus and come here to Trailer Stadium? I sure hope so. All right, two-point play coming. Middle of the field, Zane Smith under center. Dickey behind him. It is Smith running right. Takes on a tackler, blasts through, and scores the two-pointer. 30 to 14. Fulcher on top with 5.34 to go in this first half. We'll have Daniel Gotera at halftime, and we'll, we'll have our nice long conversation with him. But if the Fulcher girls show up, I'll say uh, thank you, Daniel, but I need to talk to them. We'll be right back. Be the first to know. Sign up for the first Tire and Automotive email updates and be the first to hear about exclusive promotions and special offers. Plus, get a $10 off coupon for your next service just for joining. First Tire and Automotive always treats you like family and puts you first. $15 off your next battery purchase and $75 off service, totaling $500 or more. Head to the website for even more specials and to set your appointment. FirstTireandAuto.com. First Tire and Automotive supporting school and youth sports programs for over 26 years. Get to one of First Tire and Automotive's four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. FirstTireandAuto.com. Full sure to kick off. They could do an onside kick at any time, and they do. And it is fielded by Peto, and they'll have it at the 49-yard line. And that was a very courageous fielding of the football. I wasn't sure who, uh, who took the football. He was absolutely blasted. He touched it before it went 10 yards, which you can do if you're the receiving team. And now the officials are gathered together near the spot where he fielded the football. He was kind of on his knees, and as soon as he got the ball clutched to his chest, he was hit. This is football, though. All right, Bill Stevens, I think, is going to say a little something to us after he has his discussion with the crew. There is no foul on the play. All right, so the Fulcher fans say it is quite appropriate that there was no foul on the play. So it is Peyto football at the 50-yard line. They trail 30 to 14. The game has been closer than that score indicates. But Fulcher's defense, if they can come through here, get the football back without surrendering a score, I think uh, they'd be in pretty good shape. 
Farrar in the pistol. I'm sorry, in the shotgun. Takes the snap. Fakes a handoff. Rolls to the left. Being rushed. Throws. And the ball is knocked down. Rafe Taruta swats it away. And if he had not done that, it might have been a big play for DeQuaylen Lott. He was a little bit open there in the left flat, but there was a heavy pass rush coming. And Farrar really couldn't zip the ball in there. He kind of had to throw it off his back foot. Second down and 10. Peto from the Fulcher 49. Ferrara with a long count. Takes the snap, drops straight back. The lefty swings it out on the check down. And it, the play that is a completed pass, but it ends up being a loss of six yards because his running back simply fell down as he caught the ball. Terrence Johnson. So now it's going to be third down and 16, and let's look for the Chargers to unleash a nasty pass rush. They got Sheldon Rice, they got Oki Toby, and they've also got Jamar Wilson. On third and 16, Farrar drops straight back, and he throws it down the far sideline, ball up in the air, and is swatted away incomplete. But we're going to get a flag. I think we're going to get defensive pass interference called against David Obenor of Fulcher. I don't know that it is a warranted call, but it is a call that's going to be made nevertheless. With 4.46 to go in the first half, and it'll give Peto an automatic first down. Here's Bill Stevens. Full sure fans don't like the call and the Peto partisans love it. Triple receiver formation on the left side. And now they switch over to the right. They've done that four times now. 12 on the play clock. Farrar ready, and there's movement by one of the guys in the backfield, the H-back or fullback dude, you know, big blocking guy. He was leaning forward. And I think what they, they did on that formation is they got Alexander Smith, who's an offensive lineman, wearing number 64. He lined up in the backfield. But he was just leaning forward, and he couldn't keep his balance. So now it is first down and 15 for Peto from the Fulcher 45. Jackson Farrar ready. Turns around and hands it off. There goes Johnson. Gets the five yards back plus a couple more. He's bent, folded, and stapled after a seven-yard gain. Asher Jacob finishing off the tackle. Second down and eight coming up. Ball on the far hash mark as Peto drives from right to left here in the second quarter. They trail 30 to 14. Farrar hands it off. Terrence Johnson breaking away, gets inside the 20. He may go all the way in for a touchdown for the Peto Panthers. He can shift, go from zero to 60 in about three seconds. And he scores from 38 yards out with 4.01 to go in the half. And that can make it a one score game if Peto goes for two. But it looks like they're bringing out their kicker Omar Yagi. Terrence Johnson really can get up to top speed quickly. Yagi's kick is up. And it's good. 30 to 21 is our new score. Full sure on top, and they'll be receiving the kick when we return on bitefortben.com. 
Mark your calendars. Professional Volleyball is coming to Houston in January 2025. Led by Houston's newest pro team, Love Houston Volleyball. Get ready for non-stop action as some of the world's best players take the court. Featuring Olympic medalist Misha Hancock and Jordan Thompson. Love Houston is ready to compete for the season's first championship title. Get your tickets now for this historic first season. Visit LOVB.com today. Volleyball is the next major league. Lean Eddy Graphics, the gold standard in Fort Bend County for screen printing, embroidery, banners, signs, t-shirts, and all kinds of specialty items. Whatever you need to advertise or show school spirit, team spirit, or company spirit, nobody does it better than Lean Eddy Graphics. We started creating our products in an apartment 23 years ago, and now our state-of-the-art facility in Stafford has everything to make your vision come true. Call your friends at Lean Eddy Graphics, 281-499-4959. Leonetti Graphics, the official banner provider for VipeFortBend.com. All right, Peyto to kick off. They've just scored a touchdown that gets them within 30 to 21. Yagi with a short run up. And the kickoff is coming down to Hicks. And it's a reverse. And it's Mike Brown. Outside the numbers on the far side gets near the 34. And he's wrestled down and thrown down after the play was over. That'll be a personal foul on Peyto. And the penalty will put Fulcher almost in Peyto territory. That was so, so needless. It's a playoff game, guys. So Mike Brown is ushered out of bounds, and he he had taken at least three steps out of bounds as the tackler was kind of grabbing him and twisting him around. That's okay, but then he just threw him to the ground. I mean, that, you, this... Uh, Brainless. Thank you. The number is omitted to protect the guilty. You know, that's a, a homage. I don't say homage. That's a homage to Dragnet, the old TV show with Jack Webb. All right, so the ball at the 49-yard line of Fulcher. The Chargers lead it 30-21, to 3.53 to go in the half. And Ryland Forks back in there at quarterback in the spread formation. It's the pistol. Takes the snap, rolls left, throws deep down the field for Trey Jametta. He's open. He's got it. Ten-yard line. First and goal. Ryland Forks hit as he throws and going back there to pull him up. You got Chance Bryant and also one of his other linemen, Tino Diaz. Oh, that was right on the money to the, the great tight end. Well, I'm going to say he's a great athlete tight end, Trey Jametta. I don't know if he's a better football player or baseball player, but he's pretty awesome at both. And Katie Peto wants to take a timeout with 3.46 to go in the half. We'll be right back. We are the volleyball school with three locations. Katie, the Woodlands, and our newest in Richmond on West Belfort. We have the best developmental volleyball program in Fort Bend. We have the high-level training you need to get on the top club and school teams. And you'll have fun doing it. Our Richmond facility is at 18120 West Belfort. Visit thevolleyballschool.com and come train with us. All year long, the volleyball school has been presenting Tuesday night volleyball on vibefortben.com. And we will continue it when we follow the Fulcher girls to their state semifinal against Austin Westlake. Meanwhile, in football, Fulcher trying to go up by two touchdowns again. Forks under center. Turns around, hands it off. A flag comes in. There goes Broadway around the right side. One man to beat. Stiff arms him, and he gets in. This will be a touchdown if it stands, but I have a feeling it won't stand. Number eight and ten. Number eight was going down as number ten was already in motion. All right, so Broadway. And... Uh, Braden Kennedy both kind of together committing an infraction where Broadway was in the process of going down to put his hand on the ground while Kennedy was still moving and you can't do that 
So that moves the football back to the 14, where it's still first and goal. Ryland Forks has not thrown too many passes tonight, but the ones he's thrown have been right on the money. 56-yard touchdown pass to Braden Kennedy and a bomb to Trey Jametta to get him near the goal line on this possession. Here goes Broadway running right, takes on a tackler. In fact, two tacklers who bring him down quickly. It's uh, going to be one-yard gain, if that. One of the tacklers, Dejan Petway, and the other one, Corday Christ. So now it's second down and goal at the 13-yard line. So just a one-yard pickup on that play. And Broadway comes off. No, he's still out there, but... Demarius Fro joins him, and now they go to the Zane Smith under center formation. Creighton Dickey right behind him. There goes Zane over the right side. Trying to twist away from Peto Tacklers. He gets down to the 10, but that's Zane it. Smith it's going to be third Zane. down. Brings up the third down for the Chargers. Third and goal from the 10. But it doesn't look like they're bringing on Ryland Forks. They're probably just going to say, yeah, we know it's it's 10 yards to go for a touchdown, but, but we're going to run it. Although Zane Smith did throw a pass earlier, he rolls to the right, and he is going to throw it. He's got Broadway. He's got a touchdown. They kind of pretended that maybe the snap was high or something. And Zane Smith rolled to his right. He didn't hold the ball very long because a pass rusher was in his face and he threw it to Broadway who skipped inside the pylon on the near side and with 1.48 to go in the half, Fulcher has the lead up to 36-21 and they'll go for two again. I'm just anticipating the arrival of the Fulcher Chargers girls. Wow, it's going to be great to talk to them. I want to do an in-game interview if they remember to come up here. Zane Smith running left, and he did not get in. The two-point play fails. However, it is 36-21, a two-touchdown lead for the Chargers with 1.48 to go in the half. We're back after just this uh, quick message on, <laughs> on ByteFortBend.com. Ooh, we got a question. Brian W. asks, it's the holiday season and I'm looking for deals. Is Xfinity having a Black Friday sale? Well, Brian, we got you covered. Get iPhone 16 Pro on us. Just ask us how. Plus, you can also get fast, reliable Xfinity Internet with a line of Xfinity Mobile Unlimited for a great low price. So don't wait. Bring home a new iPhone 16 Pro built for Apple intelligence. And connect to reliable 5G and Wi-Fi speeds up to a gig on Xfinity Mobile. That's a big deal. More like a gig deal. Now through December 3rd, ask how to get the new iPhone 16 Pro on us with an unlimited plus line. Plus, get Xfinity gigabit internet with free Wi-Fi equipment for only $25 a month for 12 months with no annual contract when you add unlimited mobile. Go to Xfinity.com slash Black Friday sale to learn more. Restrictions apply. Taxes and fees extra. After promo, regular rates apply. Gig Wi-Fi requires Xfinity Gateway. Xfinity Mobile requires Xfinity Internet. Gig speeds available via hotspots to Xfinity Mobile customers only. Reduce speeds after use of monthly data included with your data option. Actual internet speeds and data thresholds may vary. All right, Peyton Tucker is standing 11 yards behind the football. He's about to run up and kick off. And he kicks it deep this time. No onside kick. Goes all the way to the end zone, but it's going to be brought out across the 10. Hit near the 15. Run into the right. Gets to the 20 and blasted at about the 22. They were so ready for the onside kick, I didn't really check to see who was deep to return it. How about that? And I'm sorry I didn't uh, identify the kick returner for Peto. By the way, just in case you're wondering, First and ten for the it's getting kind of chilly here. 62 degrees. The wind has died down a bit, but uh, those who wear T-shirts and shorts are regretting it right now. First and ten from the 22 for Peto. Farrar takes the handoff. 
Hands it off to Johnson, straight up the middle, gets three, maybe four. Coming over from his right tackle slot, Jamar Wilson wrestled him down. Three yard pickup, second down and seven. Clock now at 122 and ticking down. Farrar drops straight back, the lefty throws it, a little check down to the running back over here. Very short gain, Terrence Johnson was quickly buried by oncoming tacklers Logan Hudson, Sheldon Rice, and also Evan Ferns. In fact, it was a loss of one, so it's now third down and eight. We'll see if Fulshur's defense brings the heat. The clock under a minute to go. 52 seconds left in the half. By the way, Peto will get the football first to start the third quarter. Farrar sends a man in motion. It's an umbrella motion. But there's a whistle before they can get the play underway. Peto takes the timeout with 35 seconds to go, and we'll keep it right here. Don't forget at halftime, we will have Daniel Gotera, formerly of Channel 11, a sports reporter and anchor for KHOU-TV. And... You know, if we're talking to him, but the Fulcher volleyball girls come up to the concourse, then uh, we'll we'll just say thank you, Daniel, and we'll talk to the girls who have played their way into the state final four in Class 6A Division One volleyball, and they will play Austin Westlake next week. And if they get the victory over the Westlake Chaparrales, then they will go to Garland the Saturday before Thanksgiving for the state volleyball title, and if they do that, we're with them. We'll follow them anywhere. Same for the football team. Third down and eight coming up. Peto doesn't want to give the football back. Farrar in the spread formation, looking at the defense, calls for the snap, and they hand it off. Terrence Johnson buried for the loss of two. Caleb Augustus and Chance Bryant all over him, and Fulcher takes a timeout with 29 seconds to go, and we will take a break here on VibeFortBend.com. Professional volleyball is coming to Houston this January, featuring Olympic medalists Micah Hancock and Jordan Thompson. Love Houston Volleyball is Houston's newest professional team. Get ready to watch some of the world's best volleyball players from Olympic medalists to NCAA champions and international superstars. With the action kicking off on January 9th, visit LOVB.com for more information and tickets for Love Houston matches. Volleyball is the next major league. Back at Trailer Stadium where Fulcher leads 36 to 29 with 29 seconds left in the first half. And it's going to be fourth and 11. And Fulcher called a timeout because they want to get their hands on the football. Peto brings out its punting unit. Omar Yagi standing on his own five yard line. And we'll see how this goes. Fulcher likes to rush the punter. Here's the snap, it's very good. They don't rush him and Yagi boots it away. And it flutters to a stop near midfield. In fact, it's still rolling. And it's downed at the Fulcher 42. Tyler Washington picked it up and let's see what Fulcher decides to do. What will the play call be with 18 seconds to go? Fulcher just the attitude and the culture of the team is to not leave points out on the field. They, they just don't back down. If there are points to be had, then they will go after them. Ryland Forks in the gun with Broadway to his right and Zane Smith to his left. Two receivers on the far side and one on the near. Forks looks over at Smith, swings it to Broadway, gets through some traffic, headed to the sideline. Stiff arms a man, gets out of bounds. Near the 42 yard line with 12 seconds to go. Broadway, 
12 seconds to go in the half. By the way, Fulcher just, they don't place kick very often. They'd have to get really close, I think, before they would decide to kick. They're probably going to be flinging the football toward the end zone. Forks calling out the signals. Rolls to his left. And he throws it deep down the field. He's got a man open. It is caught. Touchdown! Mike Brown! Woohoo! With three seconds to go in the half. Unleashes the bomb from 44 yards out. And when Forks throws it tonight, oh man, he's just been so accurate. It's incredible. That makes it 42 to 21. And they'll line up to try a two pointer again. What a great night to be a Fulcher Charger. Smith running right, two point play, goes in standing up. 44 to 21 with three seconds to go in the half. And the flag core, those girls are tired by now. Those are cheerleaders holding up that flag and running almost 100 yards and they're running pretty fast. CFHS for Churchill Fulcher High School and I would like to have met Churchill Fulcher, but, you know, he died a long time ago. But God bless him. They're bringing in a little Metallica. That's good. I think Coach Caduti likes that. <laughs> All right, Peyton Tucker ready to kick the football away with three seconds to go. And only one man is back, as in way back, but I can't quite get the number on him. Tucker, more than 10 yards on his run up to the football. There it goes. Ball goes into the end zone and Peto will bring it out to the 10. Hit and wrestle down inside the 10. And that's how the first half ends. Domination most of the time by the Chargers, 44 to 21. They lead it. We'll be back with You're Daniel Gotera of KHOU Channel 11. Be the first to know. Sign up for the first Tire and Automotive email updates and be the first to hear about exclusive promotions and special offers. Plus, get a $10 off coupon for your next service just for joining. First Tire and Automotive always treats you like family and puts you first. $15 off your next battery purchase and $75 off service, totaling $500 or more. Head to the website for even more specials and to set your appointment. FirstTireAndAuto.com First Tire and Automotive supporting schools and youth sports programs for over 26 years. Get to one of First Tire and Automotive's four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. FirstTireandAuto.com. Welcome to halftime on VibeFortBend.com. Glad to have you with us. And it's a great opportunity here to talk to our old friend Daniel Gotera. I'm sure you remember him as a sports reporter and anchor at KHOU Channel 11. Now he's with the Harris County Houston Sports Authority. Daniel, welcome in and tell us about your role. Well, thanks for having me, Roger. Appreciate it. Always enjoy the work that you guys do at, at Vipe and all the high school coverage that you do. It's really valuable, right? Because I think, I think a lot of people are passionate about it and they just need access to it. So this is good stuff. So thanks for having me on. I am a communications director here at the Harris County Houston Sports Authority, and we do a bunch of stuff for the community when it comes to sports engagement with the city of Houston and in Harris County. And it allowed me to transition from Channel 11 to come to the Houston Sports Authority and still be involved in sports. I run the Hall of Fame for us, the Houston Sports Hall of Fame. I do stuff for the Sports Awards. So a little bit of everything to, to stay engaged. Outstanding. So I remember back when I was a teenager, and that was a long time ago, like 
Carter administration a long time ago. But there was a Houston Sports Authority at the time then, and I remember vaguely a man's name, Sidney Schlenker. Does that name ring any bell with you, or have there been many changes in, in leadership of the Harris County Houston Sports Authority? So this iteration of the Harris County Houston Sports Authority was started after the Oilers left town in the late or mid 90s and then there was some rumblings that the astros and the rockets wanted new stadiums and they were possibly leaving so the city government city and county government got together and they decided to form this entity in the late 90s to make sure that our professional sports teams are taken care of and the stadiums are built and the taxpayers were able to fund that as well so this iteration started then that's a name that i i'm not too familiar with but i i appreciate your memory on it well, maybe you shouldn't appreciate my memory because it might be a little bit inaccurate. It, that might have been some other kind of entity that might have had the word authority in its name, but it may not have any connection to where you are now. Well, yeah, I don't, I don't think it does, but, I, you know, there's always been that need to you know, fulfill that sports appetite, right, here in, in town. And that's why we're here, and we want to make sure everyone is happy and all the teams are satisfied. Absolutely. I mean, I know the heartache of teams leaving, so... Anything you can do to bring great events here and make sure the team stay, that's a good thing. All right, so you did such great work at KHOU Channel 11, but there was something kind of outside of what you did on air. This documentary about Marshall Buffs football called The Program, and I, I wondered, first of all, have you done work on any other such film, or was that the only film that you produced? So, yeah, while I was at Channel 11, I had the idea to do something outside of the normal news realm, right? Because I think there is a little bit of a need for that type of content, sports content that just kind of dives deeper right. into uh, sports stories, into communities. So I came up with the idea of the program. We did four episodes while I was at Channel 11, actually. We did Marshall, we did North Shore, we did Pearland, and then we did Santa Fe after the school shooting for their first football game after the shooting happened down there in Santa Fe. So it was a great series. I loved everything about it. Coach James Williams down at Marshall is one of my favorites. Uh, Lloyd Banks, the whole crew down there at Marshall, I love them. I'm always going to have a special place in my heart for those folks because they really opened up the doors. So when you do shows like that, you really have to have the trust of the coaching staffs and of the players that will take care of them and we did we put microphones on all of them you saw the show and it was a really it was a great time uh, that we had with marshall but ever since i left channel 11 now that i've joined the sports authority we did do a documentary on andre johnson going to the pro football hall of fame which was really cool we got to go to canton with him and we put a whole documentary on it and it's airing right now on space city home network that's outstanding. I just love the opportunity to shine the light on great accomplishments and especially great people like Andre Johnson. And I love James Williams and Lloyd Banks. And they've done such great things for Marshall. So uh, that was that was a wonderful thing in every way except for one. And I, I know you'll take this in the lighthearted way that it's intended. It was 2021 and the Buffs had been to the state championship game the previous two years. And then after you, you did the program documentary, they lost to Barbers Hill in the first round of the playoffs. Did, did any grief about that somehow get back to you? Oh, I know. I did, I did get teased about it. I was like, what did you do to us? You kind of cursed us a little bit. I know. It, it was crazy. Pearland, the same thing happened to them. They, you know, that year when we did Pearland's documentary, Tony Heath stepped down. And so they had a really kind of a crazy year when we joined us. So I felt like that was kind of following us, and I felt bad there for our last one for Marshall, but they kind of took it in stride. That was a great Marshall team, but Barbers Hill was pretty solid. Too. And by the way, back in 2010 when Pearland defeated Euless Trinity, I think that was, I don't know why, but it was my favorite state championship game where a Houston team, you know, beat someone from the DF Dub. There have been a few others, but that one just stuck with me, and I, I like Tony Heath. I could talk to him for hours. All right, let's take a quick break. We're talking to Daniel Gotera, formerly of KHOU Channel 11, but now with the Harris County Houston Sports Authority. We'll be right back on VipeFortBend.com. Professional volleyball is coming to Houston this January, featuring Olympic medalists Micah Hancock and Jordan Thompson. Love Houston Volleyball is Houston's newest professional team. Get ready to watch some of the world's best volleyball players from Olympic medalists to NCAA champions and international superstars with the action kicking off on January 9th. Visit LOVB.com for more information and tickets for Love Houston matches. Volleyball is the next major league. 
Welcome back to Halftime on VibeFortBend.com. we got playoff football today, and we're talking with Daniel Gotera of Harris County Houston Sports Authority. And, Daniel, a lot of people, I'm, I'm probably one of them. I'm definitely one of them. They probably don't know exactly what the HSA does. You kind of described that earlier. You want to make sure that the sports franchises stay here. And I know that Houston gets Final Fours. They get Super Bowls. They get international soccer events so is there anything else that the sports authority does yeah i mean those are our two big responsibilities first and foremost is obviously maintaining uh the sports venues that we do own as in toyota center minute may park shell energy stadium and even the rugby stadium as well so we, we, that's our first priority maintain the stadiums make sure that the tenant is happy with what's going on in there and make sure that everything is is running smoothly with that and we also do some uh work down at nrg park with the texans but that in and of itself is a separate entity, but we like to lend a helping hand there too. And then obviously sports marketing has been a huge uh, focus of us over the last couple of years. You know, we were able to bring the World Cup to town. That's coming up in a, about a year and a half now. And then the World Baseball Classic is coming up in 2026 as well. We have Junior Olympics that is coming to town next year. You mentioned the Final Fours, the Super Bowls, all that sort of stuff is coming to town. So we take all of that under our umbrella, and we're pretty proud of it. Does every city in the United States that considers itself a major player for events like that and teams like that, do they have something like this, or is this something special that not everybody has. Yeah, most cities have a sports commission. Um, you know, Dallas, Arlington area has a pretty strong sports commission as well. They've done a really nice job bringing things there too. LA, obviously with the Olympics going there in 2028. Kansas City has a strong one too. So yeah, most cities that are vying for some of these big international and national events has to have some organization. Now, our organization is a little different in the fact that we own the stadiums. So that gives us another layer of responsibilities. Uh, but yes, yeah, sports commissions are a very popular thing because they really help the city get on the map, so to speak, in the sports business. Also, I'm going back and thinking, I think this happened before you got here. It was in the early 2000s when Houston really made a serious bid with the United States Olympic Committee mm -hmm. to host, you know, and then if you are the choice among the American cities, then you have to convince the International Olympic Committee that you're the the place and George de Montrand worked on that did such a great job of course they rejected it they decided to go with I think I think it was San Francisco was their choice but San Francisco didn't end up being the host uh, when the Olympic Games came along but George and and uh, the people that he were work he was uh, working with on that after it was over and they the committee said no they said is there anything we could have done better? We want to know what we can do next time and maybe get a yes. They said, no, your presentation was perfect. And, and the, the layout, the facilities, everything was perfect, which makes me think, why didn't you choose Houston? And I, I just kind of have that, that uh, Houston inferiority complex. I'm thinking, why not us? Yeah, I mean, look, it's pretty crazy now that I've been over here to kind of see the other side of the sports industry a little bit, just really how much it takes to go into some of these bids. Just recently, we bid for that World Baseball Classic, which is going to be huge at Minute Maid Park in March. It's basically, really, that's the that's the World Cup of baseball, right? You have the best players in the in the world playing here. We're going to have Team USA, Mexico. They're going to be here at Minute Maid. It's going to be an awesome atmosphere. But I didn't realize how much it went into that collaboration with the folks at Houston First, which run in the downtown district, and the Astros, and all that stuff rolled into one. So it, it's pretty actually pretty impressive. To see us all working together on that. Yeah, and the local fans will be a little conflicted if Jose Val uh, Jose Altuve is playing for Valen uh, Venezuela. I said Valenzuela because I'm no. thinking about Fernando. Yes. We lost him. Yep. Um, but uh, if Jose is playing for Venezuela, they might root for Venezuela just because they love <laughs> Jose so much. If there are not enough Astros on the U.S. team. Yeah, no, that's cool. But I, I think baseball has needed that for a long time, right? And I, I, it's gaining popularity. That the last World Baseball Classic was huge. I remember being at a bar in Kansas City. During the NCAA tournament, I was over there with U of H while I was still at Channel 11. And people were actually watching the World Baseball Classic on TV, which has never never been seen before. So it comes at a perfect time that it's coming to Houston. All right. Can you spend a couple more minutes with us? Absolutely love this. I love being interviewed, by the way. I've done a lot of interviews, but I love being interviewed. Well, I also like that I met you at a high school sports venue. I mean, you were out there covering it. And, you know, sometimes... Uh 
not all of the local sports anchors will get out to the high school games. They'll just send the shooter, but you are out there. So good for you, Daniel. We'll be right back on VibeFortBend.com. Playoff football, it's halftime. We'll be back in a moment. We are the volleyball school with three locations, Katy, the Woodlands, and our newest in Richmond on West Belfort. We have the best developmental volleyball program in Fort Bend. We have the high level training you need to get on the top club and school teams, and you'll have fun doing it. Our Richmond facility is at 18120 West Belfort. Visit thevolleyballschool.com and come train with us. We're talking with Daniel Gotera, who's been a Greater Houston resident for a long time. He was with KHOU Channel 11 Sports, and now he's with the Harris County Houston Sports Authority. And I just kind of wondered if the role that you're in now is something you maybe had an aspiration to do, or was there something that you were working toward in the sports casting business? And I noticed, I think, during your you know, late in your time at, at KHOU, you, you also did some news anchoring. So how did this come up? And I'm sure you jumped on it very quickly. Yeah, I mean, I, actually, while I was at Channel 11, it was a period of transition for me because, you know, I had two little kids at home. Um, you're right, I've been in Houston since 1992. So this is... This is I didn't realize it was that long. Yeah, this is, this is home. I grew up here. I went to Cinco Ranch High School. And my wife is from Sci Falls High School, so I mean, this is this is home. This is where I wanted to be. I got back to Houston, worked at Channel 11 for a long time, but then I have two little kids. They're seven and four years old. I wanted a better schedule. Sports brings you to work on the weekends all the time, and there I didn't want to miss some of those things. So I did do a little bit of news there towards the end, but then I got a call from the sports authority uh, and said, "Would you like to come in and do this role, be the producer of our sports awards show, and be our director of communications?" And I thought it was just the right time for me. Channel 11 was great. I did a lot of awesome things. I covered a lot of great events, met so many wonderful people. But I used all of that and transitioned here, and I think it's really helpful. So I didn't envision being in a role like this. You know, when you're in the TV world, in the media world, that's you feel like that's all you're ever going to do because it's hard to really get past what you know and what's right in front of you. But then you kind of open yourself up to different things, and I've really enjoyed my time here. All right, so I I don't know why that in, in conversations we'd had, usually during weather delays at, at <laughs> football true. games. That's true. Uh, but I remember you saying you went to Northwestern. Is that correct? I went to Northwestern up in Chicago because I was born in Chicago and uh, moved down here when I was eight years old. And my dad went to Northwestern as well. And I hadn't realized, I had just been following Northwestern forever because my dad went there. And I didn't realize they had such a great journalism program. So when I really got into this whole journalism thing in high school, I applied to my dad's alma mater and I got in. And then I got the job down here in Houston after a stop in Sherman, Texas, where I was there for about two and a half, three years, covering high school sports, which is what I've always loved. And as you speak to me right now, you're wearing the maroon hoodie that could be for Cinco Ranch. It was Sherman Maroon. I've never seen them play. They are. They were Maroon. Yep. Yeah. Good job, Roger. Nice job. Uh, they are part of one of the oldest rivalries in the state of Texas. Sherman Denison. That rivalry is always huge up there for the Battle of the Axe. Which is very passionate fan bases up there. So it was. It was fun covering high school sports there, and then coming to Houston, which is obviously on a, on a grander scale. So you get to see two different variations of it. Yes, yeah, so the detestable Denison Yellow Jackets, right? That's it, yes. I, 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 yeah, let's go with that. <laughs> they have a new stadium up there. I haven't been in Sherman in a long time, but they've built, uh, they've built up both of those programs a lot. Now they're, I think they jumped classification from when I was there too, but that rivalry is longstanding. All right, I'm sure you get a chance to meet a lot of athletes. Uh, Spencer Arigetti, Cinco Ranch grad, have you had a chance to converse with him? I have not, actually, not since he's been here. I haven't been, you know, because my job here doesn't allow me to go to the games as much. I will say, now that I'm not in the media world, my wife and I do have tickets to the Texans game, so I still go every Sunday, but now as a fan. So now we're like big-time Texans fans. We're all in on it. I haven't talked to Spencer, though, but I'm, I'm happy for him that we've seen his rise through the organization. By the way, something I should do, but I don't. I just spit out a name, but not everybody is a scene head and loves baseball. Spencer Arigetti, Astros pitcher, 
great part of the staff this year, and he went to Cinco Ranch. So that's why I brought his name up, and we'll have one more quick visit. One, one other thing I want to ask Daniel Gotera. Glad you're with us on VibeFortBend.com. Be the first to know. Sign up for the first Iron Automotive email updates and be the first to hear about exclusive promotions and special offers. Plus, get a $10 off coupon for your next service just for joining. First Iron Automotive always treats you like family and puts you first. $15 off your next battery purchase and $75 off service, totaling $500 or more. Head to the website for even more specials and to set your appointment. FirstTireAndAuto.com. First Tire and Automotive supporting schools and youth sports programs for over 26 years. Get to one of First Tire and Automotive's four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. FirstTireandAuto.com. All right, we're back with Daniel Gotera. The third quarter is going to be coming soon, but I wanted to ask him something about high school sports. I can tell that you, you love your memories of going to high school venues, and I just wondered... Do you sometimes, like, like a coach, will watch a game, even if he's no longer coaching, and he'll kind of second guess and he'll see how things are done? Do you ever kind of watch the way they're presenting sports? Because it seems to me that the local station's sports segments are getting shorter and shorter. I have an appetite for more. And do you ever kind of look at him as an armchair quarterback? Yeah, you know, and that's – it's really – it's sad in a way because when you live in a city like Houston, when there's so much sports happening, it's really it's really unfortunate that stations are only giving them about a minute, minute and a half, and that's oh that was always been a point of contention with the folks in the industry. Now that I'm not in it, I can I can say that that that's something that we've always thought. Oh, we should get some more time. We're in the city of Houston. It's okay. It's like Dallas, right? We're a bigger city than Dallas, and they get a whole bunch of time for their sports up there. So, but I think that's just the media landscape as a whole. The local TV market is different and it's it's not an easy time to be in the local TV market but it's always changing so that's why you have to come up with different programs right but yes as an armchair quarterback I, I do kind of sit and wish these guys had a little bit more time and can really expand the repertoire because we have some really talented people so I know there's been some change over here recently I know Matt Musil left right after me Mark Berman left from Fox so there has been some change over for people that have been here for a long time but we still have some good folks that need their time. And by the way, I am continuing to pursue getting an interview with Matt Musil and one with Mark Berman because, oh, the stories they could tell. Oh, absolutely. Those guys have been around for so long and, you know, worked with Matt for, what, 15 years over there at Channel 11. He told me a bunch of good stuff. Maybe some of them that he can't share, but some that he could share. Mark as well. I mean, those guys are just an encyclopedia of Houston sports knowledge. I think about Matt when it was the Love You Blue Oilers era when you didn't have to hang back and only go into the terminal area of an airport if uh, you didn't have a ticket. And in those days, teams actually traveled on a regular plane with seats next to civilians and stuff like that. And when the Oilers would come back from some of those playoff victories, it was insane. It was absolutely a fire marshal's nightmare but so much enjoyment for those who got to see him come off the plane. Yeah, absolutely. I j it just felt like, you know, fans just felt a connection to these guys a little bit more so than they do now. But again, that goes back to the changing social media landscape and how players have their own voices and, you know, media is cut off a little bit more some of these professional teams. But it's the sign of the times. It's 2024, so things change. But, yeah, those Oilers, they, they have documentaries made about them. That was – I wish I had covered that team because they seem to be a lot of fun. All right. So um, I had a friend share an article with me that kind of uh, told the story about how the local sports anchor used to be such a big star. I mean, he would when, – when he would walk on to the sidelines to cover a game, there would be people – yelling out his name, you know, whether it was uh, Gifford Nielsen or whomever, Bob, Bob Allen, Allen, that kind of thing. Yep, yep. So um, I will share that with you if I can dig up that article. But now, and I'm not picking on Greg Bailey, he seems to have the shortest segment, and, and he'll talk for about 40 seconds, seconds and say, we'll be right back. You know, and yeah. that's that's the end of it. And that, that that's really what it's become. I mean, there's so many things that – News stations are trying to pack in. They're trying to appeal to social media a little bit more. They're trying to they're trying to do different things. And I've always my my big commentary on local news has always been stations have to define what success looks like for them. 
and sometimes unfortunately it doesn't include sports and which stinks because Houston is a really passionate sports town still and they love their sports especially the Texans and the and the Rockets and the Astros more so the Astros and the Texans those are really the ones driving this train so but yeah my heart goes out to those guys sometimes because I love all those guys and and I developed some good relationships with them. So it is weird not being in that vibe, but the fact that I'm still here at the Sports Authority getting to work with them and being around them is great. All right, Daniel Gotera, fantastic work here at the Harris County Houston Sports Authority. Thanks for spending so much time with us. I hope I didn't empty my briefcase too much because sometime next year, I think I want to talk to you again, see what's going on over here. Absolutely. And hey, I'm well, I'm happy to come on anytime to talk with you and anything that you guys need. You guys do awesome work. I really appreciate all the stuff you do for Houston. And we can be friends unless Cinco Ranch is playing one of our Fort Bend County teams like Fulcher or Ridgepoint in a playoff situation. I'm sorry. Uh, we can't talk to each other at that time. And uh, oh, one other thing. Zane Smith is this amazing running back for Fulcher. He hasn't cut his hair since the second grade. It's hanging out the back of his helmet, and he has a brother who plays for Houston's rugby team, who is the youngest, I believe, professional rugby player in the history of the world. Really? Yes, last name Smith, but no relation to me. Wow, that's fantastic. No, I, I, that full share program has really gotten strong over the last couple of years. Coach Caduti? Yes. Yeah, he's a, he's a good guy out there. I've, I've done a couple of things with him. In fact, I live out there in Katy near near Fulcher, so the high school is about 15 minutes away from me. So, yeah, that's that's a great that's a great angle. That's a great story to do. I hope he doesn't get pulled down by his hair too much. He did in I'm the sure most recent does. Fulcher game that we broadcasted. He get, did get yanked down, and I was so proud of myself. I said, "That's not a penalty. It's okay to do that. Horse collar is a penalty, but yanking the hair is okay." Oh man, that should be a penalty though. Man, that could be really bad. No, hopefully they do well. Hopefully they do well. All right. Daniel Golterra, thanks, thanks again, and uh, we'll be back with the third quarter, either in a minute from now or just a few minutes from now on VitefortBend.com. Professional volleyball is coming to Houston this January, featuring Olympic medalist Misha Hancock and Jordan Thompson. Love Houston Volleyball is Houston's newest professional team. Get ready to watch some of the world's best volleyball players from Olympic medalists to NCAA champions and international superstars. With the action kicking off on January 9th, visit lovb.com for more information and tickets for Love Houston matches. Volleyball is the next major league. All right, back at Trailer Stadium, 44 to 21. Fulcher leads Peyto, waiting for the start of the second half. And let's tell you about some other action that's going on. First of all, we'll tell you about last night. The Randall Lions in Class 5A Division II with an easy 63 to 7 win over Belton. So they will advance to the next round. Also, Ridgepoint won 41 to 10 in their game against Pasadena Doby, and they're going to play North Shore. North Shore, uh, they had a little bit of trouble early with Deer Park, but they stretched it out and won easily. So it's going to be North Shore against Ridgepoint next week, and that will be our broadcasted game next Friday night, probably from the rig in Pearland. I don't know. I, I hear the parking is tough. It's hard to get there. I, I don't know. But we're going to do that game. Meanwhile, if Fulcher hangs on and wins this game, they play either Lamar or Cy Fair next week. But let's talk about what is going on tonight, basically around the greater Houston area. The Woodlands leading Aldi Nimitz 42-6 to in the third quarter. Not a big surprise there. I'm an original Highlander, so, so booyah on that one. Looks like the Woodlands will advance. But they're in Region 2. They really have nothing to do with anybody in Fort Bend County. Okay, so... Clear Springs is trailing in the third quarter, 14 to seven, they're down to Kingwood. And the winner of that game is gonna play Manville next week in class 6A division two playoffs because Hightower got bounced out of the playoffs by those Manville Mavericks. Speaking of uh, Cy Fair and Lamar, uh, so it'll be if it is uh, Fulcher victorious tonight, they'll play either Lamar or Cy Fair, and Lamar is leading 21 to six at halftime of that football game. 
possible upset. I guess I would consider it an upset in Region 2. Klein Oak is leading Bridgeland 17-14, that game in the third quarter. I'm just going up and down this thing. I don't want to give you too many scores. Atascacita at halftime leading Dickinson 38-20. to We move on and on. Uh, Pearland in the third quarter leading Fort Bend Travis 21 to nothing. So Pearland threatening to do to Travis in football what they did in volleyball, eliminate them from the playoffs in the first round. Straight Jesuit uh, kicking the you know what out of Katie Tompkins 35 to 14. That game is at halftime. Ailey Felsick, two and eight on the season in the playoffs, playing at Katie, and Katie beating them 55 to 13. I really, I'm sorry, just being brutally honest, I believe that Katie's JV could beat Ailey Felsick in that playoff game. So Katie's Tigers should be well rested when they get to the second round. All right, uh, I think they're going to be playing Hell's Bells. Yeah, there it is. And they didn't play it very long. I'm just going up and down these scores here and uh, see if maybe anything else here is of interest to you. By the way, very uh, proud of the fact that the Elkins Knights, after a long playoff drought, it's been a long time since they've been in the playoffs and a long time since they had won a playoff game, but they beat Shadow Creek last night in the Class 6A Division II bracket. So good on you, Elkins Knights. Gallant glory, baby. Okay. I've looked at the scoreboard, and I don't think there's anything else on there that I need to tell you. So here we go to start the second half. Fulcher leading 44-21, to and then we'll kick off. Peyton Tucker has it teed up, and Fulcher will be going from left to right here in the third quarter. They've been onside kicking it so much that Peyto is keeping 10 of their players within 20 yards of, you know, the the... The line where they have to stand behind. Well, that's very eloquent on my part. It is a kick on. It's an onside kick, and Peto recovers it at their own 45. Going high up in the air to pull it down and secure it. Daniel Oladipo. All right. So, what has Peto cooked up? Their offense has been explosive at times. Fulcher's has just been more explosive. Jackson Farrar, their quarterback, and their main man at running back is Terrence Johnson. Sometimes they bring in Curtis Zeno. Now they shift all the way from the right to the left. Slot receiver on the near side, and now Farrar hands it off straight up the middle, Terrence Johnson, and he pushes the pile, and the pile pushes him, and it's a pretty good gain, six yards to the Fulcher 48. Forty-four to twenty-one, Fulcher with some some very well-timed passes by Ryland Forks. He threw the ball fewer than five times. And Johnson running up the middle. Caleb Augustus hits him first. The ball comes out. And it is scooped up by Fulcher, but the play had been blown dead. David Obenor scooped up that football, and he was thinking, I can run to the house. But he was hearing the whistle. So you got Chance Bryant, Caleb Augustus, and also in there for Fulcher. They got a number 39. Uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I need to... Need to look at my other roster. I'm sorry, I don't know who 39 is for Fulcher, but I'll look it up. Third down and five for Peto on their first possession of this third quarter, and rolling to the left is Farrar, the left-hander throws it, and it's a one-handed catch for a first down at the 33. That was a beauty. 
Ikenna Nobu. They mark him at the 34. That'll be a first down. Think of First Tyrant Automotive for all your car care needs. Check them out at firsttyrantauto.com. First catch for Obu. Farrar now fakes a handoff, drops back and fires it deep over the middle. 50-50 ball, incomplete. He was trying to deliver it to Nobu. And Brian Hooven broke it up. Now Peto brings in Zeno, but they leave, Ter leave Terrence Johnson in there. So both of their two stud running backs standing alongside Jackson Farrar. Now Johnson goes in motion to the right, and they swing it out there to him. He makes a spin move, dives down to the 31 just to pick up a three, and it's going to be third and seven. Jerome Drain. There to make sure he he didn't go any farther. You know, he basically tackled himself on that spin move in the dive. Big play time for Fulcher's defense. Clock ticking down to the 10-minute mark in the third quarter. They're rattling the aluminum bleachers. And a fake to Johnson, Ferrar around the left side, gets to the edge, he's got the first down and more inside the 20, gets to the 10, and runs out of bounds near the eight. Brian Hooven ushers him out of bounds, and they're talking to each other as they go to line up for the next play. First and goal from the eight. Farrar looking over at the sideline where they have four coaches in the Carolina blue hoodies. By the way, Zeno runs off suddenly and now we have uh, a flag and it's gonna be a substitution infraction. So Zeno was sprinting off the field because they had 12 guys out there and you just can't make a change that late in the play clock. So now it'll still be first and goal, but from the 13, not the eight. Ball will be at the 13 yard line now after Cody, the first and goal. All right, if uh, Fulcher's defense could keep Peto out of the end zone in this, uh, it's a 23 point game. then the Chargers would be in really good shape. Nobu, the receiver out in single coverage against Jer Jerome Drain on the far side of the formation. Here goes a man in motion and Farrar gives it off on the little shovel pass jet sweep, getting down to the five yard line and that's it. And uh, need the, the guy needs to run over here a little bit closer. Maybe Joshua Scott. And if so, that's his first reception. Second down and goal at the five yard line. Farrar hands it off to Johnson. Johnson into the end zone with a quick five yard touchdown run. And Peto closes the gap. That makes it 44 to 27 with the extra point to come. Johnson for a Panthers touchdown. So Fulcher has scored six touchdowns, and sometimes you have people that criticize and say, why go for two all the time? Well, the fact that they have gone for two means that it remains a three-score game. And the kick is, the extra point kick is blocked. Scooped up by Fulcher. They try to return it. They might be able to get it down the field, but not quite. Oh, great effort. David Obenor got it. 
and he got all the way to the 35 yard line before they dragged him down. So it's still 44 to 27, again, a three score game, which it wouldn't be if Fulcher had not been going for two after all of their touchdowns. We'll be right back. Listen to this. Tonight's regional final volleyball match. The Chargers are state semi-final match against Austin Westlake will be on MikeFortBend.com. Sponsored by First Tire and Auto, Xfinity, Leonetti Graphics, and Love Houston Professional Volleyball. It's always free to listen live or later on MikeFortBend.com. Podcast, the broadcast home of Fulcher Sports. Don't you bet your sweet bippy. We'll be back. In their state semifinal match against Austin Westlake. Congratulations, Closer Volleyball. Mark your calendars. Professional Volleyball is coming to Houston in January 2025. Led by Houston's newest pro team, Love Houston Volleyball. Get ready for non-stop action as some of the world's best players take the court. Featuring Olympic medalist Misha Hancock and Jordan Thompson. Love Houston is ready to compete for the season's first championship title. Get your tickets now for this historic first season. Visit LOVB.com today. Volleyball is the next major league. Peyto kicks off, and from the 18-yard line, it's Mike Brown shifting toward the middle of the field, making moves. A flag comes in. He gets across the 35 far sideline, still going. Gets to midfield before they usher him out. They never got him down. But I think this is going to come back. The flag was thrown back at the 35-yard line. You know what? I was just uh, hoping that we would get one or more of the Fulcher volleyball players to come up here and join us on the concourse. And I know it's possible that uh, we have some folks in the stands listening to this game. By the way, they get uh, Braden Kanak for the blindside block. Anyway, so if there's someone in the stands that is listening to this game and you have a volleyball player sitting anywhere near you then uh, tell them we would like to do an in-game interview where we talk about how it went in their sweep yeah that's right a sweep of Cinco Ranch all right the penalty takes it all the way back to the Fulcher 15 and they're going to go with that heavy run package with Zane Smith under center he takes the snap and runs left He is tripped up and limited to a two-yard gain. Corday Christ has been doing that throughout the game. He's very quick, and somehow he's he's got a knack for just reaching out and hitting lower legs of ball carriers and knocking them down. Second down and eight. Fulcher leading 44 to 27. Have the ball on the left hash mark at their own 17. Smith is running right. Zigging and zagging. Dives over the 20 to the 23. It'll be third down and three coming up. Ball will be at the 22-yard line. Kylan White, the linebacker, who's been making quite a few tackles tonight for Peto, came through on that one. Fulcher definitely does not want to punt the football away, so they will give it their all on third down and three. Nearly every player who's in a position to block is pointing at someone like, I got that guy. There goes Smith. He's fighting. I don't think he's going to get the first down. He didn't. He only got one when he needed three. So Fulcher will punt it away with the line of scrimmage being the 23. Surely, surely they will punt it away. You got to have some major cojones if you're going to go for it on fourth and two from your own 28 when you're up by 17 in a playoff game. And that's just what they're going to do. Do they realize what down it is? I'm sure they do. Smith keeping it. 
Diving, he came up short, he didn't make it. That's a one yard gain, and it's gonna be Peyto football inside the 25 of Fulcher. And again, I'm, I'm not sure who made the tackle, but if it was an ankle tackle, it's probably Christ. He is so quick, he can slip through there and he trips people up. All right, here we go. The Fulcher defense needs to stand up and pick up the offense. 7.20 to go in the third. First and ten for the 24-yard line as Peyto goes right to left. That is from west to east on this cool night. Cool and getting cooler. The ball on the near hash mark. Terrence Johnson, the running back. They send Nobu in motion. Farrar swings it to Nobu, who came across the backfield. Gets inside the 20 and near the 10. And Logan Hudson bulldogs him down near the far sideline. But that's a first down. Think of First Tyrant Automotive for all your car care needs. Check them out at firsttyrantauto.com. 15-yard pickup. No, make it a 16-yard pickup, and it's first and goal at the eight. Farrar looks to the end zone, throws it up there, and it's caught by Nobu for a touchdown. Peto has scored to make it 44-33 to with the extra point to come. This game is getting more exciting than it needs to be at this juncture as Omar Yagi comes on to kick the extra point. Gets it up in the air and it is good. 44 to 34. We'll be back on VitefortBend.com. Ooh, we got a question. Brian W. asks, it's the holiday season and I'm looking for deals. Is Xfinity having a Black Friday sale? Well, Brian, we got you covered. Get iPhone 16 Pro on us. Just ask us how. Plus, you can also get fast, reliable Xfinity Internet with a line of Xfinity Mobile Unlimited for a great low price. So don't wait. Bring home a new iPhone 16 Pro built for Apple intelligence. And connect to reliable 5G and Wi-Fi speeds up to a gig on Xfinity Mobile. That's a big deal. More like a gig deal. Now through December 3rd, ask how to get the new iPhone 16 Pro on us with an unlimited plus line. Plus, get Xfinity gigabit internet with free Wi-Fi equipment for only $25 a month for 12 months with no annual contract when you add unlimited mobile. Go to Xfinity.com slash Black Friday sale to learn more. Restrictions apply. Taxes and fees extra. After promo, regular rates apply. Gig Wi-Fi requires Xfinity Gateway. Xfinity Mobile requires Xfinity Internet. Gig speeds available via hotspots to Xfinity Mobile customers only. Reduce speeds after use of monthly data included with your data option. Actual internet speeds and data thresholds may vary. Well, it was 44 to 21 at the half, and now it's 44 to 34. And here is the kickoff by Peto. It's a short one that bounces. They got to get on it. And Hicks does, dives and recovers it at the 27. So, you know, you think about what the Texans have been doing lately, coming out and not scoring at all in the second half. We can't have that. No, sir. So Fulcher sends the offense back onto the field and Ryland Forks is out there. The sophomore quarterback, I'm, uh, I'm guessing, has played fewer than half of the snaps tonight. As they've had that special heavy running package where Zane Smith takes the snap most of the time. Full sure up by 10, 6.52 to go in the third. And Forks hands it off to Broadway. Nice run. On first down, eight yards, slanting over the right side. Kylan White, another tackle. By the way, Peto has an excellent defensive lineman, Nicholas Elko, 
ELKO, but he's not related to the Aggies head coach, although he's a good enough player, I'm told, by the Peto staff that, uh, you know, maybe Mike Elko would like to adopt him. He might be an Aggie someday. Who knows? All right, second down and two after that eight-yard run. And it's a bootleg. Forks rolling to the right. He's going to keep it. He's going to run for a first down. Nice job. Gets to the 42. And uh, he outruns the pursuing tackler, Kylan White. Peyto Band whooping things up. 6.03 to go in the third. Clock will restart on the snap. First and 10 from the 41 for Fulcher. There goes Broadway. And that slant play very effective, just like when Arian Foster was playing for the Texans. He was in his heyday. And it's a six yard pickup over the right side. Peyto's defense, just body language telling me that maybe they're a little bit tired. Lamar Johnson made that last tackle. It'll be second down and four for Fulcher. And the Chargers taking time between plays. No need to rush. Forks commanding the offense. Under center on second and four. Gives it to Zane Smith, running left, first down, hurdles a man, inside the 35, there he goes, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, and down at the 4. First and goal for the Chargers. Well, I guess this is a very good response after giving up a couple of touchdowns that narrowed the gap to 10. Forks under center, Broadway behind him to his left, Zane Smith behind him to his right. Give to Broadway, right side, dives into the end zone, touchdown! Four yard touchdown run for Broadway. Makes it 50 to 34. And now, Fulcher's gonna go for two. And if they go for two and make it, then they're up by 18. And I might not be a smart man, but that tells me that Peyto would need three touchdowns to surpass them. Middle of the field, the ball right on the three yard line. Forks. Gives it to Broadway, running right. He's in the end zone. The two-pointer is good. 52 to 34. We'll be back on VibeFortBend.com. 445 to go in the third. Be the first to know. Sign up for the first hour in automotive email updates and be the first to hear about exclusive promotions and special offers. Plus, get a $10 off coupon for your next service just for joining. First hour in automotive always treats you like family and puts you first. $15 off your next battery purchase and $75 off service, totaling $500 or more. Head to the website for even more specials and to set your appointment. FirstTireAndAuto.com. First Tire and Automotive supporting school and youth sports programs for over 26 years. Get to one of First Tire and Automotive's four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. FirstTireAndAuto.com. Professional Volleyball is coming to Houston this January, featuring Olympic medalist Misha Hancock and Jordan Thompson. Love Houston Volleyball is Houston's newest professional team. Get ready to watch some of the world's best volleyball players from Olympic medalists to NCAA champions and international superstars. With the action kicking off on January 9th, visit lovb.com for more information and tickets for Love Houston matches. Volleyball is the next major league. Okay, Fulcher kicked off. Peyton Tucker kind of looped it over the first line of players. And it kind of no boo. It kind of no boo made the fair catch. And they mark him at the 27 yard line. Well, Peyto's running game has been working effectively enough where they don't necessarily need to be throwing the ball down the field. Even though they're down by three more than, well, 
They'll need three touchdowns and to pitch a shutout the rest of the way to come through and win this game. All right, 27-yard line, three receivers on the right side of the formation. Jackson Farrar hands it off straight up the middle. Terrence Johnson, look out! He may be gone! And one of the Chargers grabs a piece of his his waistband and brings him down, and that was Caleb Augustus. He just saved a touchdown. That's Caleb Augustus. Yes, indeed it is. 20-yard pickup by Terrence Johnson up the middle. They have a first and 10 at the Fulcher 47, and now they take as little time between plays as they can. Farrar ready. Hands it off. There goes Johnson, and Augustus wraps him up for a loss. One yard deep in the backfield. And it's second down and 11. You know, I think during my next commercial break, I'm going to text Sidney Zimmerman, head coach of Fulcher Volleyball, and find out when they're playing Austin Westlake. Farrar on a bootleg, keeps it near side, lots of room, still going and goes out of bounds inside the 25 of the 23. That completely fooled the Fulcher defense. He faked the handoff up the middle and he was already around the corner and running down the field when most of the Fulcher defenders realized he had the football. 3.46 to go in the third quarter. It's 52 to 34, but Peto is not going quietly. Umbrella motion from left to right and up the middle. Terrence Johnson into the end zone for a touchdown. Fulcher's defense is now looking tired. Almost untouched and in from 22 yards away. So the pressure is on the Fulcher offense. They've got to keep matching Peto score for score, although here in the second half, Fulcher has scored eight points, and Peto has scored 19 and looking for number 20 on the extra point kick attempt from Omar Diagi. Diagi's kick is a line drive, and it's good. 3.39 to go in the third, and it is 52 to 41, Fulcher over Peto. Be the first to know. Sign up for the first Tire and Automotive email updates and be the first to hear about exclusive promotions and special offers. Plus, get a $10 off coupon for your next service just for joining. First Tire and Automotive always treats you like family and puts you first. $15 off your next battery purchase and $75 off service, totaling $500 or more. Head to the website for even more specials and to set your appointment. FirstTireAndAuto.com. First Tire and Automotive supporting school and youth sports programs for over 26 years. Get to one of First Tire and Automotive's four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. FirstTireandAuto.com. We are the volleyball school with three locations, Katie, the Woodlands, and our newest in Richmond on West Belfort. We have the best developmental volleyball program in Fort Bend. We have the high-level training you need to get on the top club and school teams, and you'll have fun doing it. Our Richmond facility is at 18120 West Belfort. Visit thevolleyballschool.com and come train with us. Fred Hicks returning the kick for the Fulcher Chargers. 3.33 to go as he advances it out to the 40 yard line. Pretty good place for Fulcher to start. But their lead is down to 11. By the way, I have texted Sidney Zimmerman, head coach of the Fulcher Chargers volleyball team, to find out when and where they're going to play their state semifinal against Austin Westlake. They're in the Class 6A Division I bracket. All right, Ryland Forks under center. Hands it off to Zane Smith. Two arms wrapped around the football, and there he goes across the 50 and tumbles to the 47. 
He got to the next level really quick there. Dejan Petaway undercutting him, sending him head over heels on the tackle. That's a first down. Think of First Tyrant Automotive for all your car care needs. Check them out at firsttyrantauto.com. 13-yard pickup by Smith. Ball right in the middle of the field as Fulcher moves from left to right. Here goes Zane Smith over the left side. Gets another first down, exactly 10 yards to the 37. That will move the sticks again. When we get into the fourth quarter, I'll have some score updates for you on the ones that will be of interest to you. Actually, I said Zane Smith made the first down. He made nine and a half yards, so he did not get the first down. But I think they'll be able to take care of that on this play. Forks hands off to Broadway, going right. First down and more inside the 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. The race to the pylon. Did he get in? Yes. Touchdown. 38-yard run by Patrick Broadway. They made the first down and a touchdown. Well, Peyto's offense is clicking away, and they've been hard to deal with, but Fulcher's offense has been answering well enough to remain uh, comfortably is not the right word. <clears throat> How about solidly ahead? They go for two again. Rodden Forks hands it off to Zane Smith. He blasts into the end zone and gets the two-pointer. 60 to 41 is our new score again. It is a margin where Peyto is going to need at least three touchdowns in order to save their season. 2.09 to go in the third. We'll be back. Ooh, we got a question. Brian W. asks, it's the holiday season and I'm looking for deals. Is Xfinity having a Black Friday sale? Well, Brian, we got you covered. Get iPhone 16 Pro on us. Just ask us how. Plus, you can also get fast, reliable Xfinity Internet with a line of Xfinity Mobile Unlimited for a great low price. So don't wait. Bring home a new iPhone 16 Pro built for Apple intelligence. And connect to reliable 5G and Wi-Fi speeds up to a gig on Xfinity Mobile. That's a big deal. <laughs> More like a gig deal. Now through December 3rd, ask how to get the new iPhone 16 Pro on us with an unlimited plus line. Plus, get Xfinity gigabit internet with free Wi-Fi equipment for only $25 a month for 12 months with no annual contract when you add unlimited mobile. Go to Xfinity.com slash Black Friday sale to learn more. Restrictions apply. Taxes and fees extra. After promo, regular rates apply. Gig Wi-Fi requires Xfinity Gateway. Xfinity Mobile requires Xfinity Internet. Gig speeds available via hotspots to Xfinity Mobile customers only. Reduce speeds after use of monthly data included with your data option. Actual internet speeds and data thresholds may vary. All right, Peyton Tucker kicking off for Fulcher. There it goes. Line drive kick, and that's going to reach the end zone. It'll be a touchback. Ball be out of the end zone. Keep coming back out to the 25. So next week, we know that on Friday night, our ball game to broadcast is Ridgepoint against North Shore. We also know that whenever the Fulcher volleyball team takes on Austin Westlake, we will be there. But uh, I need to know now, you know, real soon so I can make arrangements. And uh, hopefully we'll have a Thursday game for you as well, maybe a Saturday one. Well, actually, on Saturday, I'm planning on being in Garland for the state volleyball final, which would involve your Fulcher Chargers. All right, Jackson Farrar with the ball at the 30-yard line. Drops back, hit as he throws. He hangs it up, and it's incomplete. Evan Ferns was all over Jackson Farrar, and he just kind of put it up. And let's see, who was backpedaling in the secondary for Fulcher and almost picked it off? That was Jace McCurdy. 2.02 to go in the third. 
By the way, I said the ball was at the 30-yard line. It's actually at the 25. Sorry about that. Touchback. How could I make that mistake? Anyway, Farrar, second down and 10, drop straight back. Swings it out there to Johnson, makes a move to the inside. Spins away from one tackler, but only gets to the 21. So it's a loss on the completion. Third down and 14 coming up for Peto. So in the battle between the teams from Fulcher's District 26A, Katie Tigers are beating up on A. Leaf Elsick. They will win that game easily. Richmond Foster, fantastic effort last night. They were kind of outmanned against Jordan, but they only lost by eight points, 22 to 14. We have a timeout taken by Fulcher. And I think this would be a good time for me to stay right here and tell you what else happened among the teams that come out of uh, Fulcher's District 26A. And let's see, one of those is straight Jesuit. And the last time we checked on their game, they were ahead. Okay, so uh, all the teams talk strategy. I'll go looking for that one. Kingwood leading Clear Springs in the fourth quarter. It's 28 to 20. And the winner of that one, which is a 6A Division II bracket game, will play Manville next week. Manville beat Hightower last night. Lamar leads Cy Fair 21 to 13. So that game is just in the third quarter. It's still anybody's game. And full sure if they close out this victory, will play either Lamar or Cy Fair, whoever survives that one. Atascacita leading Dickinson 44 to 26 in the third. More scores in a moment, but now back to the field. Third down and 14. Peto really needs this conversion. They're at their own 21, dropping back is Farrar. Here comes the rush, he's in trouble. Spins away from it, and he's hit as he throws. Far sideline, out of bounds. And Peto almost surely will punt it away with 108 to go in the third and trailing by 19, 60 to 41. Pearland is... Stretching it out against Fort Bend Travis. The Tigers season will be over. They're down 38 to nothing in the fourth. Mike Brown. Mike Brown back to receive the punt. From Yagi. The snap is a good one. Fulcher doesn't rush it. There it goes. It's a high-hanging kick. Fair catch called for and made by Brown at his own 49. And Fulcher will go back on offense again. And if they can turn this possession into a touchdown, I think the competitive part of this game will be over. All right. Uh, I was talking about straight Jesuit. Looks like they're going to beat Tompkins. They're up 49-36 to 36 in the fourth. Katie, meanwhile, beating Ailey Velsic, not surprisingly. It is 65 to 13. Elsick came into that game with a record of two and eight. Bullshire fans like making that noise, banging their feet against the aluminum bleachers. Ryland Forks under center. Sends a man in motion, that's Braden Kennedy, but he doesn't move much. Now give to Broadway over the right side. He slips, puts a move on a guy, and gets 10 yards. Wow, Patrick Broadway just did not want to go down. And a handoff, number eight. All the way to the 41, and that will move the sticks. It's a first down. Think of First Tyrant Automotive for all your car care needs. Check them out at firsttyrantauto.com. Broadway gets another Chargers. The Woodlands College Park is leading Westfield 10 to 7 in the fourth. I don't think that would be a huge upset, but I think it would be kind of an upset. All right, now looking at some Class 5A scores. College Station leading Crosby 41 to 10 in the fourth.
Forks hands off to Broadway, and there goes Patrick with a quick eight yards on the right side, and Forks got hit hard as he handed the football off. Kind of a kidney shot, it looked like. And I think it was uh, Kylan White, the linebacker, who hit him. And Forks is kind of walking around a little uncomfortably. But that's the end of the third quarter. And since I was giving you scores, I'm just going to stay here and give you a few more. AM Consolidated is going to eliminate Friendswood from the playoffs, those being the uh, Class 5A Division I playoffs. AM Consolidated 62 and Friendswood 20. That's in the fourth. Galveston Ball is going to survive the first round of the playoffs. They're leading Houston Waltrip 28 to 14 in the fourth. But the sad thing is uh, they don't have Jonah Williams. What an outstanding player he is, but they lost him to injury in the first half of the season. I mean, he is a super talent who can do almost anything, score from almost anywhere. By the way, Sidney Zimmerman, head volleyball coach at Fulcher, just texted me, and they are still working on... Oh, wait a minute. All right, we know they're playing Tuesday at 6.30. The question is where. They're still working on that. So Fulcher versus Austin-Westlake on Tuesday at 6.30. I would love to hear those conversations. <laughs> Smithson Valley beats South San Antonio. By the way, Smithson Valley is Coach Sidney Zimmerman's alma mater. So I root for Smithson Valley because she's awesome. Here we go. Second down and two. Give to Patrick Creighton. Not sure. Yeah, that's right. Not Patrick Creighton. <laughs> uh, that's somebody else. And I can't believe I'm mentioning his name. Uh, Creighton Dickey, you know, because he, he's with a competitor, like someone can compete with VibeFortBend.com. Anyway, it was Creighton Dickey. He made the first down at the 25-yard line, and the Chargers are on the march as we have trash and transition into the fourth quarter. Forks is back out there. He's doing okay. Turns around, hands it off, and runs over to the right. Creighton Dickey again. Breaks one tackle, but can't break the second one. He's limited to a one-yard pickup down to the 24. Second down and nine. Brenham leading Texas City, 38 to nothing. Texas City, one of the rivals of Randall in their district. Texas City's not a bad team, but I hear Brenham's pretty good. And uh, Randall, if they win next week, would play Brenham probably right after that. Second down and nine. Forks turns around, hands it off to Zane Smith. He and his blonde hair get two yards over the left side. And submarining to make an innovative tackle. Brandon Brown. It's going to be third down and seven coming up. Iowa Colony in the same district as Texas City and Randall and Fort Ben Marshall leading at uh, Killeen Ellison 47 to 6 and by the way Marshall won easily over Waco University last night I can't remember the final but it was a runaway third down and seven and the snap to Creighton Dickey hands it off to Patrick Broadway inside second and second 15 10 Looking for the pylon. He got there. Touchdown. 22-yard run. Patrick Broadway. And Fulcher has just scored 66 points. And I think that'll be the dagger right there. And they're going to go for two again. It's what they do. By the way, Port Natchez Groves, PNG in Class 5A Division II, leads Hallsville 43-13 in the fourth. They're in Region 2. Marshall and Randall don't have to worry about them till late in the process. There goes Broadway. Sweeping right, could not get into the end zone, so the score will stick 
at 66. But that tells you that even if Peto scored three touchdowns and got a two-pointer after each one, they would still lose 66 to 65. So uh, as far as being a proponent of going for two, nothing further, Your Honor. We'll be back. Be the first to know. Sign up for the first Tire and Automotive email updates and be the first to hear about exclusive promotions and special offers. Plus, get a $10 off coupon for your next service just for joining. First Tire and Automotive always treats you like family and puts you first. $15 off your next battery purchase and $75 off service, totaling $500 or more. Head to the website for even more specials and to set your appointment. FirstTireAndAuto.com. First Tire and Automotive supporting school and youth sports programs for over 26 years. Get to one of First Tire and Automotive's four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. FirstTireandAuto.com. Here's the kickoff from Peyton Tucker. And he drills it deep. That should go into the end zone. It does. Oh, finally down here at the end of the stadium where we're set up, I can finally tell you who's been Returning kicks, it is uh, it is Dorian Peyton Fre uh, Pettit Freer. Dorian Pettit Freer, he's a Haitian. Oh yeah, they're telling the crowd that we're doing this this uh, the next volleyball match. It's a big one. The podcast home. I really like the PA guy here at Trailer Stadium. He's awesome. All of them, but that one in particular. All right. First and 10 from the 25 for Peto, trailing 66 to 41. Ferrara hands it off up the middle. Terrence Johnson broke away. It looked like he was going to go down, but he didn't. And he runs out of bounds at the 40 yard line. You got to like his perseverance. Got a nice block downfield also from Jeremy McCullough. He had kind of leaped up, Terrence Johnson did, and looked like maybe he kind of came down on someone's back. His knees were on someone's back, and then his feet were back on the ground. And he said, well, I'm going to keep running from the 40, first and 10. It is Zeno trying the left, and he's buried. Logan Hudson finished it off, but Sheldon Rice hit him first. Loss of one. Man, loss of two. Second down and 12. And before Peto snaps it again, we're under nine minutes to go in the game. Fulcher will prevail. It's been a great night to be a Charger. Here's the snap to Farrar. He drops back, and he throws it over the middle. It's a 50-50 ball knocked away. But interference is going to be called again. I don't think this is warranted. I think Jerome Drain didn't do anything wrong, but they do call pass interference, and that'll be a first down as they were trying to get it to Nobu. By the way... Thank you, Bill Stevens. Uh, defensive pass interference is the call. So uh, there's something I need to tell you before we get to the end of the game because I don't want to be short with anyone. Ball at the 46-yard line after the penalty is walked off, and there goes Terrence Johnson running left. Caleb Guts is chasing him and finally catches up to him, but he does manage to get to the edge and turn it up for about a six-yard pickup. Okay, so I have four Leonetti Graphics banners around this stadium, and I'm going to need to take them all down. So i got to get my equipment out to the car, put it in the car, and then come back into the stadium and try to get all the banners down before they lock all the gates. So when the game's over, I will say goodbye quickly. Peto has thrown a rainbow down the far sideline and completed it so they'll have a first down and goal. 
Sorry I didn't describe that one to you, but we we do have a game that's kind of out of hand. Okay, i got to get the ID on this receiver. He made a great catch. I need him to turn his back to me. He hasn't done that yet. All right, so they give it off to Terrence Johnson up the middle, gets to the five-yard line. I think Cameron Green was the receiver who made a great catch on the far sideline. And so now it's going to be second down and goal from the five. Sheldon Rice just made that tackle on Terrence Johnson. Farrar in the shotgun, takes the snap, hands it off to Johnson. Weaving his way through traffic, but the traffic is heavy, and he goes down after a gain of just one. So it'll be third down and goal at the four. And the clock will be at about seven minutes to go when they get it snapped. They are huddling, so it'll be well under seven minutes. But Peto down 66 to 41 is not in any particular hurry. Farrar is under center, and he hands it off. And there goes Zeno fighting for the goal line. He came up short. He's down at the one. It'll be fourth and goal from there. Fourth down and goal. All right. I know the Chargers don't want to give up a touchdown here, even though they're going to win the game. There goes Farrar diving into the scrum. And they're going to run up from the sides and unpile all the bodies. Ah, there's a lot of time being taken, and it's a touchdown. One yard touchdown plunge for Jackson Farrar. That's a touchdown. That ups the ante. I guess lowers the ante now that the lead is smaller. 66 to 47. Peto playing the fight song, which is just, they borrowed one on Wisconsin. That's what that one is. Looks like Peto's going to go for two. Farrar has Zeno to his left. Farrar looking over at the bench. Something's not right. They may need a timeout. They take one. We'll take it with them and be back on VibeFortBend.com. Professional volleyball is coming to Houston this January, featuring Olympic medalists Micah Hancock and Jordan Thompson. Love Houston Volleyball is Houston's newest professional team. Get ready to watch some of the world's best volleyball players from Olympic medalists to NCAA champions and international superstars with the action kicking off on January 9th. Visit LOVB.com for more information and tickets for Love Houston matches. Volleyball is the next major league. Well, when Fulcher started playing 6A football for the first time, they went to Pearland and won at the rig in their season opener. They haven't lost a 6A game. And they are passing the test tonight in their first 6A playoff game. Two-point try by Peto. Farrar rolls to his left, looking end zone. Throws near the pylon, caught. No good. I'm sorry. And the extra point try is no good. All right, sorry. A cough got out before I could remove my headset. So the two-point play fails. 66-47, Fulcher still up by 19, 6.20 to go, we'll be back. Ooh, we got a question. Brian W. asks, it's the holiday season and I'm looking for deals. Is Xfinity having a Black Friday sale? Well, Brian, we got you covered. Get iPhone 16 Pro on us. Just ask us how. Plus, you can also get fast, reliable Xfinity Internet with a line of Xfinity Mobile Unlimited for a great low price. So don't wait. Bring home a new iPhone 16 Pro built for Apple intelligence. And connect to reliable 5G and Wi-Fi speeds up to a gig on Xfinity Mobile. 
That's a big deal. More like a gig deal. Now through December 3rd, ask how to get the new iPhone 16 Pro on us with an unlimited plus line. Plus, get Xfinity Gigabit Internet with free Wi-Fi equipment for only $25 a month for 12 months with no annual contract when you add unlimited mobile. Go to Xfinity.com slash Black Friday sale to learn more. Restrictions apply. Taxes and fees extra. After promo, regular rates apply. Gig Wi-Fi requires Xfinity Gateway. Xfinity Mobile requires Xfinity Internet. Gig speeds available via hotspots to Xfinity Mobile customers only. Reduce speeds after use of monthly data included with your data option. Actual internet speeds and data thresholds may vary. Peto tried an onside kick, but Fulcher recovered it. It was Jonathan Chipman. And Fulcher has it at the 42-yard line with 6.20 to go. So it is too early to go into victory formation or take a knee, so Fulcher will probably try to get something on the board, and wouldn't it be something to say you got more than 70 points in your first ever playoff game in Class 6A? And the points are necessary. It's not like they're running it up. Peto's offense has been clicking so well Fulcher's had to keep them at arm's length and we got a whistle and a timeout taken by Fulcher prior to that snap 618 to go we'll step away and be back on bikefortbend.com Introducing Love Houston, professional volleyball like you've never seen it before. You saw them win silver in Paris this summer. Now you can see them playing for the first time on American soil. Love Houston will feature some of the best pro players in the world, including two-time Olympic medalists Jordan Thompson and Micah Hancock. Get ready for first serve in January 2025. Visit lovb.com for tickets. Volleyball is the next major league. Lee Netty Graphics, the gold standard in Fort Bend County for screen printing, embroidery, banners, signs, t-shirts, and all kinds of specialty items. Whatever you need to advertise or show school spirit, team spirit, or company spirit, nobody does it better than Lee Netty Graphics. We started creating our products in an apartment 23 years ago, and now our state-of-the-art facility in Stafford has everything to make your vision come true. Call your friends at Lee Netty Graphics, 281-499-4959. Leonetti Graphics, the official banner provider for VipeFortBend.com. While you were away, you missed Zane one play. Smith. It was Zane Smith running for seven yards over the left side. Gets it out to the full sure 48. And we have less than six minutes remaining in the game. Fulcher's offense. Looking over at the sideline, taking their time. Now they move up to the line of scrimmage and get lined up. Ignore that. Okay. Give to Demarius Fro, running right. Close to the first down. I think he's a yard short. Demarius Fro on the carry for the Chargers. Gets into the... Okay, I found out a little something about uh, the Fulcher versus Westlake State semifinal. It'll either be in College Station or Seguin. If it's in Seguin, I'm going to go to the square downtown and sit on the world's largest pecan. Third down and one. Ryland Forks under center, one running back behind him. I believe that is Demarius Fro. The fake to the running back, rolling right as Forks, keeps it. Flags come in, spins away, keeps on going inside the 40 to the 38. And that is, hold on a second. That's a 12 yard pickup if it stands, but I think it may be coming back. You know, this is a comfortable win and some of the Fulcher fans are gonna start heading for the exits. All right, so as you heard from Bill Stevens, the penalty is against Fulcher. Chargers up 66 to 47. And we'll play either Lamar or Cy Fair next week. By the way, my favorite East Texas town, Longview, uh, my favorite school in that town is Longview Pine Tree. 
And in the third quarter, they lead Bridge City 28 to 20. Okay, third down and 11. Forks swings it out to Braden Kennedy. Can't get away from his tackler. Nice, persistent tackle by Derek Thomas. So it's going to be third down and, no, fourth down rather, and six. And the Chargers with uh, the power to let the clock go down under four minutes before they snap it again will probably just go for it. It's just their way. I'm not sure the Fulcher offense has the play play uh, given to them yet. The play clock is at 4-3. They're going to call a timeout here, I think. They do. And while they're taking that timeout, we'll see if there's anything else that you might want to know on tonight's big scoreboard. Okay, well, <clears throat> Fort Ben Crawford. What a great season for that team in its first ever varsity year. They don't even have seniors. And Crawford had a, a fine season, a winning season. They make it to the playoffs. But Houston Worthing looks like they're going to defeat Fort Ben Crawford 35-21, that game in the fourth period. They play in Class 4A Division Two. And one of the teams in their district is Navasota and the Rattlers at halftime are leading Houston Yates 35 to 18. And one of my favorite teams just because of their nickname the Port Lavaca Calhoun Sand Crabs defeated Zapata 64 to 14. That game's over. I'm getting into some of the uh, smaller town schools. All right, Fulcher with a fourth down, and let's call it five from their own 47. We'll go for it with 3.35 to go, and Zane Smith is going to be under center. Creighton Dickey is behind him. Here goes Smith, turns it up. He's got the first down. He's still going inside the 45 to the 44. And maybe Fulcher will never have to give the ball back to Peyto as they wrap up this ball game. Okay, so when this game is over, I am going to need to say a very quick goodbye. And I hope you understand, but it uh, it's not like we won't be talking to each other again soon. Tuesday, 6.30 in either Seguin or College Station. Fulcher's playing volleyball. And VipeFortBend.com will be there. Smith still under center on first and 10. And a swing pass to Mike Brown through his hands out of bounds. And they call it an incomplete pass, but it shouldn't be an incomplete pass. It was actually thrown backwards. Very slightly, but backwards. So, you know, if it had not flown out of bounds after it went off Mike Brown's hands, it would have been a live ball. Second down and 10, and the incomplete pass stops the clock with 2.56 to go. Four receivers on the near side. Brown, Jametta, uh, Braden Kennedy, and I forgot who the other one is. Second down and 10, there goes Smith to the right. Had an open side over there, inside the 30, still going down the sideline. Fighting, 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 getting down to the 10. And I think there will be a face mask right, call at the end of this play. Zero. So full shirt, striving to score 70 points tonight. 2.49 still left on the clock. And it's a first down and 10 at the 12 yard line. But I think that'll change. It'll become first and goal when they mark off the penalty yardage. Oh! You know, I assumed that it was on the defense, and they say that it is Zane Smith who committed the personal foul, grabbing the face mask. 
So, sorry about that. I should not have assumed. All right. Uh, Broadway, Jametta, Brown, and Kennedy. The foursome over here on the near side and a whistle. They were, they were going to run the exact same play out of the exact same formation, but it's a false start on Fulcher. A little bit of a sloppy end of the game, but oh well. Couldn't really ask for better for Fulcher as far as just coming through with a victory, although you do want them to uh, shore up the defense. Just can't be giving up as many big plays as they have to pay toe tonight going forward. But that's why they practice. All right, first down and 15. There's the run over the left side, Creighton Dickey. He only gets a couple of yards. Is given to number Nicholas Elko Creighton makes Dickey. the tackle. And Creighton Dickey takes it across inside the 30 yard line. Two and a half minutes, clock ticking down. Second down and 13. Now Smith has his lineman go down and he rolls to the right. He wants to pass it and he's throwing it to no one. And Zane Smith. And I didn't even see a receiver out there. So the stoppage of the clock on the incomplete pass leaves two minutes, three seconds to go. They bring Patrick Broadway back in. Okay, here we go. Dickey and Smith, and it's a bad snap. Smith picks it up. He's hit. He tries to get rid of it. He does, but nobody's down there. Trey Jametta was actually open, but he couldn't find him. So, you know, when you're up 66-47, you don't, be, uh, don't expect to be complete, uh, throwing incomplete passes to stop the clock. It's fourth and 13. I don't think we have a flag. Uh, maybe we do have a flag for intentional grounding. But Jametta was in the area. He was probably, you know, within about 10 yards of where that ball hit the ground. It is grounding. The fans don't like it, but uh, Fulcher's got the game. That's what really matters. But it'll be fourth and forever, but I'm sure they're going to go for it. I mean, why not? Well, they could punt it away. Fulcher has not punted tonight. They do bring in Ryland Forks, and I presume they're calling a pass here. They have the ball at the 40-yard line. It is fourth and 23. Braden, Kenny's, uh, Braden Kennedy split out to the right. Mike Brown on the near side. Both of them have caught touchdown passes tonight. Mike Brown is off sides. I don't know if they're going to call him for it. They should. Fourth down and 23. Forks looking at Brown. It's the out and up move. But the pass is out of bounds incomplete. And the ball will go over. Forks went down as he released the football. And I think some Fulcher fans are looking for a roughing the passer, but no such call is forthcoming. So success for Fulcher. In round one of the playoffs and next for them, it is either Lamar or Cypher. Katie Peto was a dangerous opponent, but Fulcher has passed the test. And now Peto will try to get some more points on the board, but Farrar drops the snap and has to scurry back and jump on it. 
It's a loss of six. Clock ticking and it'll be well under one and a half minutes to go when we get it snapped again. Farrar on second down and 18, fakes a handoff, throws a swing pass over on the left side. And a decent game, maybe six yards on the play as he threw a pass out there to Jeremy McCullough. And going out of bounds stops the clock. Going in motion is Johnson. Empty backfield for Farrar. Steps up in the pocket. Hit and goes down. There are the tackles. Number eight, Oki Toby. Oki Toby with the tackle, with the sack, I should say. 56 seconds to go, and Peyto takes. Man, I hope this is their last time out, but as it turns out, no, it isn't. They have one more. And you know what I'm doing? I'm starting to put stuff away because I got to make the quick getaway. Got to cut down the banners. Great sound out of the Fulcher band as always. They, they never lose. All right, Fulcher's defense goes back out there. And it is fourth down and 18 to go for Peto. Their last stand as they trail 66 to 47. Farrar drops back. Here comes the rush. He airmails it down the field. It's a 50-50 ball and it is picked off by Fulcher. David Obinor. And that'll do it. It's time to go into victory formation. Our final score is going to be 66 to 47. I want to thank Christina Weber for being the silent partner inside the mothership at Vipe World Headquarters. And thank you for listening. And for the first Saturday in 12 weeks, I won't be doing anything broadcast wise Rogers ball at the 27 yard line full sure with the ball at the 27 and the victory formation includes Zane Smith as the tackler of last resort they surround Ryland Forks he'll take a knee and I think he'll only need to do that one time yep that'll do it and good sportsmanship. We've had a good, clean game here. Not too many penalties. And Fulster will not need to snap the football again. Good job, Chargers. It's on to the next. 66 to 47. So for Christina Weber, Bob McKay, Merle Bertrand, Suna Venkat, Patrick Kinnick, everybody who's a part of VibeFortVen.com, thanks for being with us. The final again, 66-47, to Fulcher defeats Peto, and we'll continue our coverage of volleyball and football playoffs next week on your one and only broadcast home for Fort Bend County High School Sports. Good night, everybody, and God bless. Contest gave their very best coverage. Please help show your support for these fine student athletes by acting in a sportsmanlike manner. Thank you all for a very good season. We'll see you next time here at Raider Stadium. Congratulations to the Fulcher Chargers.